really is a terrific lineup to get us underway. The World Championship standings. Greg Hancock leads the way on 56 points right now. Ty Wolfenden on 48. Chris Holder on 44. Jason Doyle's win in Prague propelled him up to fourth spot and 42 points. And Matt Sienowski is just a point behind that. And a reminder when it comes to next year, if you finish in the top eight, you book your place automatically in next year's series. And Peter Kellerman, who is in heat number one, actually occupies eighth place right now. But a long way to go. And as we say tonight, round number five of 11, Kel. Absolutely, there's plenty of points up for grabs, um, but uh, you've got to concentrate on each race. The riders are now making their way out for Heat 1. Peter Kudelman is an interesting point because he started so well in Slovenia, but then has found it quite difficult to get the big scores and the big uh, finishes. That fast start he made in the opening uh, round was uh, um, big for him. So, nervous few moments here as the riders come out ready for the first race. Just explain how the riders must be feeling ahead of uh, the first race, Kelp. Always vital to get off to a good start. Yeah, the whole presentation here is huge and the atmosphere here is special, so how riders handle that is very important. Uh, building up to your first ride, it is no question, it's, uh, it is a nervy time and how you handle that is vital to how you perform on the track. You must have that fine balance between the nerves in your tummy but being relaxed enough to be able to perform at the highest level. Fabulous atmosphere again here. Thoroughly looking forward to the opening heat. Here we go, race number one on the way. Race number one of the Age of Flux British FIM Speedway Grand Prix here in Cardiff tonight. Yes, Christine Toft of Denmark is our referee. A terrific atmosphere as well, has to be said. Kelvin Tatum, the man alongside me. Former England World Cup winner, former world number three, former world long track champion. And uh, Kelvin, you rode the track yesterday. What are your thoughts? It's fabulous, absolutely perfect conditions. Got to say, they got it spot on. Thoroughly enjoyed the opportunity to have a few laps. I'm sure all the riders here this evening are really relishing the challenge. Shouldn't be too many excuses out there tonight, Nigel. Be interesting to see how the gate positions shape up tonight because uh, yeah. in some of the temporary tracks the inside gate has been very, very advantageous, but let's see how it goes. Here we go, first race of the 2016 British Grand Prix, here we go, green light is on, and they're away first time of asking and Lindbach's made a beauty off the inside gate, oh it's gone Marsling. down already, Bartosz Schmarslik is down, and the red lights are on immediately, just as Freddie Lindgren was charging through yeah. past. Antonio Lindback. And Lingwin had made a great move there because the outside gate is never easy here. Schmarslik just got squeezed up there and went down. We'll have a look at it again. Uh, Jesper Steentoft, the Danish referee, has got big decisions to make immediately here in Heat 1. Lingwin comes across from the outside. Yeah, just the front wheel taken by Kilderman. It'll be all four back. No malice in it at all. Tapes up. Keep your eyes on the, the man in the white. He misses the start just momentarily. Just runs out of room. His legs caught. See no reason to think that uh, it'll be a restart with all the four of them. Yeah, yes, Christine Toft has confirmed that it is all four riders back for the restart of the first race, which uh, I think was predictable. Just uh, Marshnik is up and on his way back. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, he's been he's a very exciting rider. Uh, but uh, there's been a lot of talk and, uh, about Freddie Lindgren coming into tonight. A lot of people fancying his chances for this evening. Made a really good move in the first corner there. He has been in very good form this season. Riders back on the way round. The last man to be pushed off is Bartosz Marslik. We're down to a minute and 20 seconds of the two-minute time allowance, so here comes the restart with Antonio Lim back on the inside. Peter Kilman goes off gate number two in blue. He's a hard charger. Bartosz Marslik, gate three in white. Freddie Lindgren going off the outside. Lindgren with just one Grand Prix win under his belt in 88 appearances. Got his 700th Grand Prix point in uh, Prague in the last round of the World Championship. But uh, here, heat number one, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, and uh, he'll be disappointed that uh, the initial stages didn't uh, didn't continue because he'd made a really good move in the first corner and uh, was getting his nose in front. But um, 
he'll have to do that again. You are absolutely right to point out about the, the track and the starting. Last year, the inside gate was red hot, wasn't it? Chris Holder had that for the final, but uh, didn't quite manage to fill it off. But there was an awful lot of success coming out of the inside, and it will be interesting to see, to see how that develops again tonight. I do know that they have been working very hard to try and level it up with one or two tweaks to the surface and how they've prepared it. So we'll see how that pans out this evening. Here we go. He come along. Second time of asking him. Antonio Lindback has made a good start. He's got oh! a little bit wide there and a nasty crash in that first turn. And again, Freddie Lindgren and Bartosz Marslik. And it was an awkward looking tumble that one and Lindgren is still down. Let's hope that he's going to be OK because he's landed awkwardly. Well, he landed some, hard some as well. He yeah. landed on the track, which would have blown all the wind out of his lungs. There may have been contact with Peter Kilderman in there as well. Uh, this is uh, unfortunate. Uh, Schmarslick is on his backside for the second time. Lindgren actually was flung, wasn't he, off his bike and landed heavily on his side or his back. We'll see the replays. He's sat up, so we'll suggest that he's not too bad. See it again. Lingback's made a terrific start. Yeah, heavy clash between Peter Kilderman and Smarslick. And Smarslick's oh. bike's just collected Freddie Lingren. And Lingren has landed heavily there on the track. And that track is pretty solid, I tell you. Heavy contact there between the boys on the inside. And that's a nasty high side. Let's hope, uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that he hasn't done something to his shoulder. Well, he's up and walking away, Kel, which is good to see because how many times do we see a crash like that that oh. results in a dislocated shoulder or a broken collarbone? Yeah. But he is walking back to the pitch, which is great to see. I think he's a touch stunned, though, and no surprise because, you know, he, uh, he got flipped over there. You saw the right hand footrest dig in, and that stops the bike abruptly. And then he was flown over the high side, as we call it and uh, then you land on the shoulder area. You'll see it quite clearly. Smarslick comes across hard and then runs in. Well, Peter Kilderman's not at fault at all. Smarslick's the one. Smarslick then causes the problem for Freddie Lingwell, who hand, lands very heavily. In truth, Smarslick could be in danger of being excluded. There is a possibility. Look how he swerves hard to the left. We're hearing all four back, so Smarslick possibly a touch fortunate. Anywhere else on the track, and Smarslick could have gone there. Oh, it would have gone. Would yeah. have gone nice because uh, you know he was scruffy away from the tapes there, wasn't he? It's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, don't beat about a bush. Yeah. Well, the situation there is that a Speedway Control Bureau official is just inspecting um, Freddie Lindgren's helmet there to make sure that it's not damaged, so that it is still a meeting safety requirements, so that he can use it in the restart. Yeah. There's Tough start. The official in the blue shirt. Tough start to the night, particularly for Smarslick and Lindgren. You know, you're nervous before your first race and they haven't got around the first corner yet and there's been two restarts, so... Yeah. Boys, boys just coming to the tapes again now. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we can see four laps now. Yeah, and the uh, most important thing from Lingren's point of view is that he is able to take his place in the restart. It's good to see, because uh, I reckon he's a bit of a lucky boy there. So many times you see bad injuries as a result of incidents like that yeah absolutely you know it's uh, it's called the classic speedway uh, accident isn't it with the collarbone when you go over the high side but fortunately he's uh, bounced and uh, he'll be pleased about that he'll feel the effects of it tomorrow but the adrenaline is still running right now so at the moment there is no pain it's all about now focusing for the third time of asking on the green line start marshal now beginning to pull him up to the tapes England just digging around Peter Kilderman just now selling. Here we go, then. Yep. Attempt number three of the first race, and Lenback has made the start once again, and Lindgren tries a clever chop up the inside. Brilliant. The inside line, that's a lovely move from Freddie Lindgren. Now he's going to try the inside run on Lindback. He has the lead with Kilderman third right now. Kilderman charging up the inside of Lindgren, and uh, trailing at the back is Smarslick, and coming through is Kilderman now, who's got the better of Lindgren, who's in danger of going to the back. Level with Smarslick now. Oh, I thought they were going to come off again there, but the lead is with Antonio Lindback, and the inside gate has worked a treat there. Lindback out in front, taking full advantage of the inside gate. Freddie Lindgren there got the better of the opposition initially, but then just drifted off the inside and Peter Kilderman forced his way through and relegated Lind Lindgren to the back. Smarslick is in third, but Antonio Lindback on his return to the Grand Prix Series has been pretty impressive in, uh, in actual fact, and he's flying away out in front in heat number one. Certainly is, Lindback is going to take the chequered flag and he's in seventh place in the Grand Prix Series.
ahead of tonight's meeting. That's a fine start for the man from Sweden, Antonio Limbach, and look what it means to him as well. Delighted to be back in the GP and uh, has ridden over here in the UK on a regular basis for all the full pilots and had a spell with the Bellevue Aces as well. And it's a fine start from the inside gate, and yep. just tapping his engine as if to say, Thank, thank you. you very much, good yeah. job. <laughs> thank you very much. Kept going and he rode beautifully out in front. Really had an untroubled passage to the chequered flag. Lingback will be delighted with that start. Lingback, Killerman, Smarslick, and Freddie Lindgren beaten up, I think. Literally. <laughs> yeah. As he trailed in at the back there, Freddie Lindgren. So, uh, good start for Antonio Lingback. It took three attempts, but we got there in the end, Kel. We did. Lindgren will feel a little bit aggrieved there. Antonio Lindback just making his way back to his pit bay, but. Um, We'll see the start again, third time of asking, the inside gate works a treat, he drops the clutch spot on, hogs the inside. Lingwin, watch Lingwin here, this is a smart move from the Swedish boy up the inside of Kilderman, but unfortunately Lingwin then just leaves a small gap coming out of Turn 4 where Peter Kilderman then repays the compliment. And uh, as a consequence of that, Freddie Lingwin, this is a great move initially from Freddie Lingwin to get the better of Peter Kilderman, but unfortunately he doesn't cover it so well here, and uh, Kilderman then runs right to the inside and forces the Swedish man a little further out. And unfortunately for Lindgren, he gets relegated to the back there. Antonio Lindback, uh, Will Perfect out in front, three points to his name. Yeah, super right from uh, Antonio Lindback, three big points. Uh, great way to start, and what a lineup for heat number two we have coming up here. This man, Greg Hancock, is the series leader in the white helmet colour. Race number two off the inside is. Matt Sajanowski of Poland with Jason Doyle of Australia, winner in Prague a fortnight ago. He's off gate number two. Greg Hancock goes off gate number three in white, has now ridden in all 16 Cardiff Grand Prix. And Piotr Pavlitsky going off the outside gate in yellow. Quite a lineup, Kelv. Yeah, really good looking lineup, Nigel, and uh, be interesting to see how Doyle and Hancock uh, go here because obviously that's a repeat of the Czech Republic Grand Prix two weeks ago where Hancock trapped. And to his great credit, Jason Doyle hunted him down and passed him and got the better of the American and won his first Grand Prix. Janowski is an interesting character. He's a world-class talent, has won a Grand Prix, but his form is up and down. So keep your eyes on the man on the inside. Yep, here we go. Heat number two. Hancock is a known fast starter. Oh. Can he make it from three? Doyle's got there from two. What a start from Jason Doyle. He's got the line up the inside is Janowski, and Hancock's at the back right now. Janowski is just going to force himself to the front. Doyle's going to try the inside switch up the inside. Lovely move from Jason Brilliant. Doyle. What a move. Passes Janowski, sweet as you like. And Pavlitsky now comes through. Pavlitsky is second, Janowski. and now Janowski returns the compliment. Whoa. Hancock's at the back. Doyle is in front. What a race here, heat number two. Proper speedway in heat number two. Doyle made a great start out of gate two. Janowski got the better of him initially, and then Doyle charged back to the front. Fabulous action between the two Polish boys for second and third, and the American Greg Hancock, a surprise, is out the back. But Doyle, full of confidence, riding really strong out in front. That went two weeks ago. Clearly, he's loving life right now. He is indeed. He's scoring points everywhere he goes in the leagues as well. And that's a wonderful ride. Jason Doyle from Australia, a big win. And he just carries on where he left off in Prague. He made a sweet start from gate number two, didn't he? And the rest were trading positions early on. But Jason Doyle, a class act these days. Fourth in the championship before tonight, finished fifth overall last year in what was his debut Grand Prix campaign as well. A superb effort. Here's the result of heat number two. Doyle, Janowski, Pavlitsky and Hancock is your finishing order in heat number two. And that was a good race as well. Not necessarily up front because Doyle got there, but the other three were having a real go. Well, Doyle had to work hard though because Janowski did get the better of him initially and Doyle responded supremely well. He made an excellent start out of gate two, absolutely nailed it to the first corner. And then Janowski here on the inside of Doyle has actually got his nose in front early doors, but Doyle makes a fabulous move here, switches back to the inside, squares the corner off, wheels in line a touch earlier than Janowski, and Janowski can do nothing about that. And the, the Australian then pulls away. Great stuff, really good stuff then between the two Polish boys. But it's all about Jason Doyle right now. Last two Grand Prix races, he's won both of them. 
and a fine start to tonight's meeting for the Australian. Well, you can hear the huge cheers around Cardiff now because Ty Woffenden has made his, made his way onto the big stage. Chris Harris is out there as well, so two British riders here in the third race of the night. We have Woffenden with two world titles to his name here. We have Chris Holder, the 2012 world champion, who, who uh, has won a couple of times here in Cardiff as well. Something Woffenden hasn't done, says that it doesn't bother him as long as he keeps winning world titles. Fair point, but deep down, I reckon he would love a win here in the Principality Stadium. What an atmosphere for Harris and for Woffenden, the British boys of gates one and three here. And we remind you, of course, that this is the final Grand Prix before the Speedway World Cup break, and the World Cup final is in Manchester on the 30th of July, Bellevue National Speedway Stadium, and Great Britain out straight through to the final. That's going to be some night as well, Kel. Yeah, looking forward to that. And uh, it will be a terrific night of Speedway. Wiffenden out here, he would love to win here, there's no doubt about that. But Harris was the man two weeks ago, got on the rostrum, rode brilliantly to do that. And I must say, he's in a very good position here. Gate one will be of some advantage. Who can forget Harris's win here in 2007? It was something special for sure. And Harris has made a good start from the inside gate. Woffenden's gone wide. Holder's there as well. Lovely move from Chris Holder. Oh! Watch out for Woffenden and up the inside here. It goes Matty Zegar. They're four abreast almost coming out of that turn. Zegar has the lead. Woffenden's got lots of speed here though, it seems. Zegar with the lead. Woffenden high and wide. Holder holds second. And Chris Harris is training at the back right now. Oh! Woffenden's had a nudge there from Harris. He's been relegated to the back. Fabulous move on the opening lap from Zagar to steam up the inside and get the better of the opposition. Harris now coming under pressure from Woofenden out the back. Holder are really going well in second place, but it's all about Zagar. Zagar, that move on the opening lap was absolutely out of the top drawer. He's got to the front. Woofenden now, brilliant move to get the better of Harris. Yep, the lead here, though, is Matty Zegar of Slovenia. That was a super ride. It was all very close early on. Holder had the lead. Wolfenden was looking good at one stage, but full credit to Matty Zegar. That was a stunning move from the Slovenian. He gets three big points under his belt. Wolfenden had to really work hard to get the better of Chris Harris in heat number three there. We have seen some decent racing early on here. Oh, yeah, that was great stuff. World-class performances throughout there. Zagar was exceptional on the opening lap to get the better of the opposition. Brilliant stuff from him. Zagar, Holder, Woffenden, Harris is the finishing order. And after three heats, we have the uh, winners so far, Doyle, Zagar and Limbach. Good start to the meeting here in Cardiff tonight. And that was lively, it was entertaining, had a bit of everything. That was a proper tear-up. Yeah, very that much That was so. a proper tear-up. And Harris makes a good start initially, gets to the first corner, but he's in no man's land there and they go either side of him down here. Watch Zagar, just keep your eyes on the yellow helmet colour. What a move that is, that's a fabulous move up the inside. He made the decision to go there and it works a treat. Wuffenden's trapped on the outside here and for a moment he then gets relegated to the back because Harris came charging up the inside there. He has to get out of the way of Harris and he's having to work overtime just to get the solitary point. Here we see Wuffenden now beginning to put it all on the line right up the inside of Harris gets himself into third place, Holder in second, but Zagar out in front, what a way to start tonight. He really meant business there. On his day, he is a class act, he just doesn't produce it often enough. He is a little up and down, but when he's on, he's a sight to behold, he's a classic style on the bike, and he rode brilliantly there. John Jorgensen there, just having a tweak to Andres Jonsson's bike, he's changing the ignition timing, and they're having to work very hard and very quickly as uh, the countdown is on. Yep, Johnson on his way round there, the heat number four it is. And Andreas Johnson will go off the inside gate. Nicky Patterson, who um, gets a mixed reception here in Cardiff, but uh, he knows that and it doesn't bother him at all. Niels Christian Everson goes off gate three in white, and Danny King is the wild card. What a moment for Danny King. He rides in the Premier League for Ipswich in the UK. And he rides for Coventry Bees in the Elite League here in the UK as well. And he won the British final for the first ever time in Manchester last month. Yeah, it was a great performance from King. It was difficult conditions and he just blew him away in the final. This is his big night, biggest night of Speedway though, no doubt about that. Here we go then, heat number four and Johnson's made a good one. 
now Nicky Pedersen's trying the inside switch, they're all trying their inside switch with every opportunity, Everson has come through, it's a second spot right now, the lead is with Johnson, here comes Everson on the inside, clever move from Niels Christian Everson of Denmark, lovely switch but Johnson is holding firm here, really kept his nerve superbly, Everson still trying everything here, Nicky Pedersen third, Danny King at the back. Inside gate working well again, Andres Johnson under a lot of pressure initially but then is now stamped his authority on the lead, Everson putting on pressure, he's not out of it, Everson, it'll chase him right to the chequered flag, Pedersen in third, and Danny King, who's coming on strong in fourth, will he get the better of Pedersen, no, Pedersen slams the door shut, Everson's coming on though, Everson's coming on strong in second, tight down the back straight, AJ slams the door shut. Yeah, good ride from Johnson. Everson's going to try one more time, but Johnson gets there, with Everson in second, and I tell you what, Danny King had a real go on Nicky Pedersen there, but Pedersen held his nerve. Pedersen really working hard there to see off Danny King, but it was a good ride indeed there from Johnson under pressure from Niels Christian Everson. Everson gave it all four laps, 100% effort there. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about 100% effort here tonight, no doubt about that. Andres Johnson was uh, terrific out in front and had to be because Everson was charging hard. And Danny King, well, he rode hard, deserved a little bit more. Johnson, the winner then of heat number four here in Cardiff. And the winners so far, Doyle, Zagar, Johnson and Limbach. Yeah, it was a good, encouraging start for AJ. He's uh, had a difficult season in the Grand Prix so far, and uh, he's uh, ridden very well here. He's uh, used that inside gate. He comes under a lot of pressure here from Niels Christian Everson, who's on the outside of him, number 88 on his back. He then uh, makes that move here, Everson squaring the corner off, and I thought for a moment he was going to be able to hang on to the lead. He was momentarily in front, but all credit to the Swedish man, Andre Johnson. he then hits the front. Danny King and Nicky Pedersen, they had a real scrap here for four laps with the three-time former world champion finally holding on for third place. But the two boys out in front, great respect between them both. And Andre Johnson will be tough to bits because, as I say, wins in the Grand Prix series this year have been tough to come by. So an encouraging start from the Swedish man. Danny King will have plenty of support here in heat number five. The second round of races for all 16 riders here. Wofferman's team have made a change to the gearing as well to the machine. Seems significant there after his opening ride where he really had to push it hard to get the better of Chris Harris, his fellow Brit. It was hard work, but he got there in the end. And here we go with heat. Number five coming up here then in the Principality Stadium. Big lineup, big race. Heat number five on the way. Heat number five. Here we go. Danny King, the wild card off the inside in red. Antonio Allen back, winner of his opening ride off gate two in blue. Matt Sejanowski goes off gate three in white, two points to his name. Ty Wofferden has made that change to his gearing. He goes off the outside in yellow, big race heat number five. Yeah, no real surprise with the gearing, that's a pretty straightforward change. Um, they haven't changed the bike, and it's something the riders do all the time, so a fairly logical move from him, but as I say, starting with gates three and four and you're opening two rides, it's not easy. And uh, you might need a little bit of good fortune to get really amongst the big points. So Wuffenden was chasing the outside run when it wasn't there, and as a consequence of the track braiding, he may have to look to the move to the inside early in this race because the grip has been moved back towards the inside white line. So not an easy start. In actual fact, in, in Prague, he had a tough draw as well where he had outside gates. So uh, he'll be looking to his later races, I think, to try and really pile the points on. Here we go, heat number five. Yes, for Steen's off, but his finger on the button. A little bit of nervous movement at the start, and the red lights are on straight away. Yeah, well, it, I don't know who jumped there. Wolfenden missed it completely. It went very quick, actually. Um, but um, Danny King may have been a bit uh, nervous on the inside. Let's have a look again here. Yeah, Danny King clearly moves early, and uh, very lucky not to have touched the tapes here. 
You see how close he gets. Ooh. Very lucky indeed. And um, that's why the red lights came on, and rightly so. Just wonder how much uh, nerves will play for Danny King tonight. And the fact that he's off gate number one as well is an opportunity for him to well, try and take advantage of this. All four riders for the restart. Well, nerves have to play a part, don't they, Nigel? This is arguably the biggest speedway meeting in the world. And, you know, Danny King coming in for his first uh, appearance here. Um, he wouldn't be human if he wasn't feeling a little nervous. And this is, uh, this is a step up from what he's been doing before. Big time, yeah. It's a massive step up from uh, where he normally rides. But uh, what an opportunity. It's a big, big moment for him here in Cardiff, in the biggest stage of all. And he does need to sit still at the start line. Yeah, we see it a lot in Speedway now, where you know riders try and anticipate the start or try and jump the start. And often we, you know, we have to have restarts. Um, I think it's, it's so competitive now, particularly at Grand Prix level, you know, the difference between making and missing the start is so minimal. Um, and uh, if you can make a start, you know, you can get in front and uh, life can be an awful lot easier, you know, with the depth of talent that we watch now. If you're in third or fourth race, you can see the world champion there in his previous race had to work really hard just for one point. Um, but that just shows you how um, tough it is out there. So. If you can make the start, it makes life a lot easier. It does indeed. So the same four riders come back to do battle for heat number five. Wolfenden, it has to be said, doesn't appear happy at all with his setup. As soon as the red lights came on there, he slowed up and went straight back to the pit gate to well, talk to his pit crew. I agree with that, but he also missed the start. I know they were jumping on the inside, but he was unaware of that because he's actually looking to his right, and the two boys on the inside are looking to their left. So he didn't make a great reaction, does need to from the outside. Here we go then, well, he's missed it again, but it's all about Danny King on the inside, can't get there, Lindbach's there, and now Woffenden lock, locks up the inside and just about nips into second spot. Lindbach with the lead, Woffenden is second, Janowski is third right now, but Janowski looks quicker than Woffenden, is trying the inside run, Danny King is in the back, Lindbach with the lead right now, Woffenden's after him though, and Janowski in turn is after Woffenden. Yeah, Antonio Lindbach has got great speed again. Wolfenden was brilliant in the first corner, that classic turn back that we see from him on so many occasions. Two points from this wouldn't be too bad, you know. Danny King just got beaten up in the first corner. Antonio Lindback is uh, moving on nicely here. This looks like he'll have uh, two wins to his name in less than a lap's time. The world champion working hard in second place, and Janowski back in third. But Antonio Lindback, this is super stuff from him. Yeah, Lindback is looking super quick here. Antonio Lindback of Sweden makes it two wins out of two. What a dream start to the British Grand Prix for Antonio Lindback. Wonderful stuff from him from gate number two. He was jet propelled and a clever move from Ty Woffenden to switch up the inside. It worked a treat for Ty Woffenden to pick up a couple of valuable points. Yeah, it was a really good move. It was close as well. They had to have the front wheel right over the white line. Antonio Limbach, what a start to tonight. He's had gate one and gate two and he's won both races and he's won them comfortably. You know, Woffenden was really trying in second place but couldn't catch him. That's very encouraging for the Swedish man. He's got six points, and in truth, he's very nearly in the semi-finals already. So, well done to Antonio Limbeck. Another yeah, very big so. three points for him. Yeah, very much so. Uh, three points for Limbeck then, and uh, he moves on to six and leads the Grand Prix with Woffenden on three and Janowski on three as well. Danny King yet to score. Fair to say, Danny's finding it tough tonight. He is. Uh, this man isn't. He. Uh, he has had his problems on and off the track, in truth, Antonio Limbeck, but uh, from what I'm hearing, he's got his life back in order and his racing is certainly um, uh, bonusing from that. Let's see the start again, Antonio Limbeck out of gate two, makes that first corner here. You see this move from Wuffenden, this is a fabulous move from him. We see, it, see him do it often, but he's gone from nowhere and into second place and a useful two points for the world champion, but even better than that was Limbeck. He was a sharp away from the tapes, He's unbeaten out of his first two rides. Great effort. Yeah, 35 points before tonight in the Grand Prix series. Uh, Antonio Limbach, so he's moved on to 41 already. Good work from Limbach. He's got a lot to do to make it into the semi-finals now, and he's still got three races to go. Nicky Pedersen off the inside in red here from Denmark. Chris Harris of Great Britain off two. Peter Killerman goes off gate number three in white. And Greg Hancock, not very often we say this, 
failed to score in his opening ride. He's off the outside gate. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Greg gets on here. Not easy from the outside. We saw Wolfenden make that move to the inside in the first corner. Whether Greg will do that, I don't know. Well, Greg tends to focus much more on actually getting the bike away and trying to get across the opposition and clamp the uh, riders down. But Pedersen there in the red helmet colour, it could be a danger, you know, he showed great speed in his opening ride, but uh, they may have made a couple of little tweaks and the inside gate should be to his liking. So it should. Here we go then with uh, heat number six, riders settling down, ready for action. Three world titles for Pedersen, three for Hancock. Six world titles on the line here now. Pedersen's made a decent one. Hancock from the outside, that's more like it from him. Oh, and down goes the man in white. It's Peter Killerman, and we're going to have to do it again. Must be a little oh, greasy instance. there, you know. Yeah. Must be a little greasy. I know that when I rode the track yesterday, there was plenty of moisture in the top surface. But uh, Kilderman spun round quite easily there. And, um, see it again. Hancock had made a great effort. As I say, he concentrates on just getting to the first corner, and he very nearly did. You see Peter Kilderman just spins round, and uh, might just be a little bit greasy there. He's spinning up all the way out of gate three. A little bit of a nudge, but to be honest, you know, the way he rides the bike with his leg back there, uh, he is partly responsible. He always has his leg back. Yeah. Well, he's and throwing he's got... right out of the race. Yeah, Interesting well, decision. Tough decision when he's been putting them all four back. Peter Kilderman won't be happy with that. I was fully expecting to be all four. But Kilderman there with his riding style, with his leg back. Does he know yet? Doesn't look like it, does it? He knows now. He's been told he's out of the race and he can't believe it. He's going to try and get to the phone to speak to the referee. There we go. I want, I want the phone. Well, a Danish referee excluding a Danish rider, so they'll be able He's to speak. not going to change his mind, Kel. No, he won't, no. Um, but I do think that that was a problem for Peter with the way he rides the bike. His leg is out the back, so he isn't being able to support himself, and therefore he actually then spins round. If we see it again, you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. As they get to the first corner here, Kilderman's missed the start. He's in amongst the traffic, but his leg goes back there. And then he's really just a passenger and the bike spins round. And I think as a consequence of that, the referees decided that it was down to him. I think he's a little unfortunate because they do get there and you could throw a blanket over all four riders on the entrance to the first corner. And in truth, and was I was tight with Chris Harris exactly, as well. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And the fact is, I think he's been a little bit unlucky because we saw the first race and they got put back every time. Well, 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 yes, for Steentoft excludes Peter Killerman. Killerman wanting a phone to speak to the referee, who, just looking away to my right, is still talking to Peter Killerman, but the riders are up at tapes, so he won't be on the phone for much longer, that's for sure. Uh, it's it's going to fall on deaf ears, unfortunately, because referees just don't change their minds now, and uh, the likelihood of that happening, but I think he... Yes, we're putting the phone down there, the referee, but um, he won't change his mind, and the riders are at tapes for the rerun. I think he's a little unlucky, in truth, because, yeah. as you rightly said, Nige, was very close with Harris as they got to the first corner. I think it would have been perfectly understandable if uh, all four were back, but I can also see the merit in excluding him as well. Yeah, it was a 50-50 call. I don't think anybody would have been moaning if they're all four back, you know, if all four riders had come back to the start. Here we go then with heat number six once again. Now, can Pedersen hit the front? Hancock's made a good start. Pedersen tries to take him wide. Harris is up the inside. Here comes Nicky Pedersen around the outside now. A second place, Chris Harris, and here comes Hancock on the inside run. Lovely move from Greg Hancock to get the better of Chris Harris. Nicky Pedersen now has the lead. Now he's going to have to work hard, but Greg Hancock makes easy work of passing him. Now Pedersen has got it all on to chase after him. Fabulous move from the world champion three times, Greg Hancock. Superb move there. Nicky Pedersen out in front. He hasn't got the speed, Pedersen, because Hancock, who came from the outside, made a great fist of it initially. What a way to bounce back from the American. Failed to score in his opening ride. Sheer class to come back with such a superb ride. Three points on the line here for the American. Yeah, brilliant ride from Greg Hancock, and uh, obviously has got more power in the tank than Nicky Pedersen. That was a great ride from Hancock.
Suvarai to sweep around the outside. Wonderful stuff from him. Nicky Pedersen raises his arm to acknowledge a good ride from Hancock. And in third place there was Chris Harris. And Hancock knows that's important. After a last place, he bounces back in some style. Hugely popular here, still very, very popular in the UK. Oh, he's popular everywhere, isn't he? Such a super nice guy. And he rides out of the top draw. Hancock at his best. Second time out. Pedersen was second. Harris was third. Killerman disqualified. This is what it means overall now. Greg Hancock moves up to three points, gets his first points on the board. Nicky Pedersen is on three points as well. That was a great ride from the three times world champion. Brilliant ride from Greg Hancock, and we're going to see it all again. This is terrific. Pedersen from the inside. Hancock made such a good effort just to get alongside them, but he's relegated to the back because Harris momentarily is in front. He makes a mistake on the entrance to turn three. Pedersen's in the middle of the track. Hancock pounces, immediately gets the better of Harris's into second place. To all intents and purposes, you've got to think that Pedersen must have an outstanding chance to win the race. But you cannot account for Hancock. Hancock, sweet as you like, moves up the inside, slips up into the front, picks up a valuable three points, back in the meeting, showing great class. Indeed, wonderful stuff from Greg Hancock. And the way he celebrated, he knew the importance of that as well. Absolutely vital that he pulled off that victory in that race. Heat number six, brilliant stuff from him. Here we go with heat number seven, and look at this for a lineup. Chris Holder off the inside, Andreas Johnson, a winner first time out of two. Jason Doyle, also a winner of three. And Bartosz Smarslik, who's been on the ground. <laughs> a couple of times. He goes off the outside. Yeah, he knows what that dirt's all about in the first corner. He's it. Yes, he has indeed. Tough race, really tough race. A couple of heat winners here as well. And Holder knows what it's uh, all about here. And Holder will be dangerous on the inside. He likes it there. Wouldn't be surprised to see Holder make the final this evening. He enjoys himself in the uh, Principality Stadium, that's for sure. Interesting race this. Tough racing indeed. Here we go. Here we go then, heat number seven. This will be a good one for sure. Doyle's looped on the start, can't get it down, now he can. Holder's got the lead, charging hard around the outside in the yellow helmet is Bartosz Smarslik. Good ride from Smarslik, Doyle's third and now charging oh. hard around the outside. Jonsson's got wide and lost it. Holder with the lead then, Smarslik second and Doyle is third. Brilliant stuff from Holder. Fence did that inside gate, didn't he? Got to say that Smarslik is going hard in second place. Smarslik almost on the back wheel with a full locker. Unbelievable stuff from the Polish man. Second place, Johnson blew that first lap, got himself in all sorts of trouble, and he's relegated to the back. Holder's in front, Smarslik is faster. He's now moving to the outside. The Australian Whoa! is just powerless to stop that move from the young Polish man. Brilliant stuff from Smarslik. What a swoop from Bartosz Smarslik. That is brilliant from the young Pole. He is a big addition to the Grand Prix series. It's a great win from Bartosz Smarslik. Chris Holder was second there with Jason Doyle third and Andreas Johnson at the back who did well to get the bike back under control. What a pass from Bartosz Marsling. He is a precious young talent. Great to see, but you just had the feeling there that he had more speed than Holder. You could see he was gathering momentum. Absolutely. And it was a wonderful move. It was coming, wasn't it? He was working it out. He tried cutting back to the inside a couple of times. But around the outside, Holder could do nothing to resist the charge from young Bartosz Smarslik. Brilliant ride. Smarslik the winner with Holder in second. Jason Doyle was third. And Andreas Jonsson uh, was at the back. This is what it means overall now. We see Doyle on four, Smarslik on four, and Holder on four now. Lindback, the unbeaten man, on six points out of six. And after this next race, heat number eight, every rider will have completed two rides. Yeah, it's been good stuff, and there's no question that Smarslik has made his presence felt there. That was an excellent performance when you consider the quality on the start line. And Doyle and Jonsson were unbeaten coming into the race. Holder makes a great start on the inside. Smarslik comes charging around the outside from gate four. No easy task. He was seeing it again. Here you see Jonsson far too much grip in the middle of the corner. Runs wide, and that really puts pay to his chances. Here we see the battle for first and second. Holder holding the inside line. Smarslik reads it, gets that extra little bit of drive around the outside and powers to the front. Super ride from Smarslik, delighted with it. 
three very valuable points for him. Holder back in second place. Good speedway. Was indeed, yeah. And it is great to watch him. He's a type of rider where you know when he's in town, you're going to see some good speedway. And so it proved. Heat number eight is coming up here. Freddie Lindgren off the inside gate. Another rider who's bitten the dust a couple of times today. Yeah. He's off the inside gate. Heat number eight. Lindgren off the inside then. Piotr Pavlitsky goes off gate number two in blue. Matty Zegar, winner first time out. He's off gate three in white. Niels Christian Everson, second place in his opener, but really pushed hard. Had yeah. speed in the engine. He's off the outside. Yeah, he did. And you can never rule out Niels. He's a real forthright rider. He gives it everything. I've got to say that um, uh, he rode brilliantly to win here last year. On the inside, Freddie Lingwin will be looking to bounce back after a disappointing opening ride. And Zago in gate three was textbook first time out. A really polished performance from him. Heat number eight it is. Good start from Lingwin off the inside, but Pavlinski's there as well. Lovely move from Piotr Pavlinski in the blue helmet colour. What a start. Now Lingwin's got lots of speed. He's going to. Really working hard, third is Matty Zegar in white, Niels Christian Everson at the back, but look at Zegar, he's got lots of speed, he's coming on strong around the outside of Freddie Lindgren here, alley and wide in the dirt, Lindgren then will try and close the door, here comes Zegar! Zegar around the outside, what a move that is, Lindgren now out of shape, Pavlitsky was superb out of gate two, brilliant move from him, keep your eyes on Zegar, Zegar can win this race, there's no doubt about that, he's got a lot of speed this evening, Pavlitsky now moving a little bit wider, Zegar charged, down, Lindgren and Everson have been dropped. Zagar now back to the inside. Pavlitsky on the outside. Brilliant speedway again. I'll tell you what, Zagar's got a lot of speed in second, hasn't he? Yep. But it's Pavlitsky who had a crash in Sweden on Tuesday. Well, no early effects here. That's a fine win for the pole. Piotr Pavlitsky in his first Grand Prix season has won a race at Cardiff. That's a big moment for the young man. What a ride it was. Zagar battling away. In second place there and had a lot of speed, it has to be said. Really yeah. gained good ground on Pavlitsky, but that's a big moment for the youngster. That's what it means to him. And uh, plenty of Polish flags around this Principality Stadium as well. Good to see them uh, making the journey. And uh, Pavlitsky makes his way back to the pits area. Heat number eight then, confirmation of the result. Pavlitsky, Zegar, Lindgren and Everson. That is the finishing order of Heat 8. And now it means that Limbach is the only unbeaten rider on six, and Zegar looking good on five. Heat number nine coming up then uh, here in the Adrian Flux FIA British Speedway Grand Prix in Cardiff. The 16th time we've been here for this Grand Prix. It's all on the heat number nine, and it's coming next. Here is heat number nine then with Greg Hancock going off the inside. He will love that, won't he? The inside gate for Greg Hancock. Niels Christian Everson goes off gate number two in blue. Antonio Lindbach, gate three white. And Chris Holder is going off the outside in the yellow helmet here. Two world champions. Hancock off the inside. Holder off the outside, an unbeaten man in Antonio Limbach as well. Yeah, it's quite a lineup. Yeah, good lineup. And uh, there's no doubt that Niels Christian Everson will want to put his last ride behind him where he failed to score. Antonio Limbach is a huge threat, of course. He's unbeaten so far. Gate three isn't easy, so it'll be interesting how uh, he gets on with that. But Hancock on the inside will be relishing it. He will understand the opportunity that it uh, can give him. Glasgow Tiger suit there, terrific that is, we were there recently and I uh, must say that they made us feel very welcome indeed. Um, uh, be uh, more than happy to go back there, that was great news. Holder on the outside as well, he's riding well, what can he do from the outside? Heat number nine here in Cardiff, Hancock again with a trademark start, that is what he's all about, a wonderful getaway from Greg Hancock, Limbach now holding second spot, Everson is third, Holder's at the back, and Limbach just chops on the inside line to put the challenge of Everson, but Greg Hancock is making it look pretty easy here, and after that last place, first time out, he's looking good for a second straight win now. Yeah, fabulous stuff from Hancock off the inside gate, Antonio Limbach is there though, Limbach is coming at him hard, in fact, well, yeah, Hancock had to slam the door shut there. The Swedish man in second place. He's got a lot of speed here, Nigel. He's coming on strong. Everson's in third. Look at Limbach round the outside. 
Look at him go! Brilliant move from Lindbergh! Goodness me, he's just blown Greg Hancock away! Yeah, how on earth did he manage that? He's gone wide and he's now a comprehensive leader. What a ride from this man! Antonio Lindbergh! Hold and up. Chris Holder just grabs third as well! Ahead of Niels Christian Everson. A battle at the front and a battle at the back as well. They got caught out by the track there. After the track raiding, I figure that they thought all the grip was around the inside. And uh, Holder was working it hard, and then Limbach thought, well, well, I've got nothing to lose here. Pushed to the outside, more grip there, absolutely flew then, and picked up his third win of the night. He's in the semi-finals, he's unbeaten, he's flying. Holder comes around the outside, on the last corner, the still third place away from Everson. Handy point for the Australian. But Antonio Limbach is dominating this meeting right now. Wonderful ride from the... the uh... Swede Antonio Lindbach to get the better of Greg Hancock, it really was superb. Spectacular to watch. Lindbach unbeaten now. Hancock, Holder, Everson. And it does mean now that Antonio Lindbach has moved on to nine points from three rides. Well, Brilliant stuff. Fabulous stuff, and uh, he is in top gear this evening. He's been riding well, he's been picking up plenty of points along the way, and he is dynamite so far tonight. Three wins out of three, here we go, tapes are up. Hancock makes a great start initially from the inside, hugs the inside, and I think for a lap or two here, they think all the traction is on the inside. But Limbach then thinks, well, it's not working out. He then charges to the middle of the track, there's more grip there, and he then takes off. Here we see it, around the outside of Hancock. Hancock is a sitting duck there, can do nothing about it, and Limbach, charges away out in front and then Holder thinks, well, I've got nothing to lose, I'll have a go as well. Well, the rest of the riders have watched that with interest and taken note. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about that, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> very, very interesting to see him get the drive. Very rare that you see Greg Hancock passed. Of course, he was passed by Jason Doyle in the final in Prague a couple of weeks or so ago, but generally, once he's in front, he dominates races. Matty Zegar off the inside in red here. Matze Janowski, gate two in blue. Andreas Jonsson, gate three white. Peter Killerman excluded in one of his rides, looking to bounce back here. Outside in yellow. The race for the semi finals hotting up. This is a key stage as well because this is the third ride for every rider. Absolutely. This is when you really should be getting your setup about rides and uh, beginning to build on a total. Um, if you haven't got a total, then uh, the pressure is on and you need to create one. Uh, Zago on the inside has one, he's only dropped one point. He's on the inside gate. Uh, he, I fancy him. Yep, good start from Janowski on two, he's made a beauty there. Matt Janowski, now second place is Zegar in red. Charging hard here is Andreas Johnson in white, he's really hotting up the action here, isn't it? Up the inside, Kilderman, but uh, the man in second place in white is Andreas Johnson charging hard. Matt Janowski looking good, he made a beautiful start, Kel. Yeah, absolutely, and Zegar missed it and that helped him. Janowski's in front, Johnson is bouncing back well here. He had a disappointing racing last time, and I've got to say, the Swedish man is really coming on strong. Big move now, up the inside, can he get there? No, not quite. Whoa, it's tight, really tight. Janowski slams the door, he lifts. They're going into the last lap, all sorts of shenanigans going on out in front. <laughs> Brilliant speedway. Johnson pushing hard for second again. Yep, Janowski kicking on here. This is a good ride from the young Paul. It's going to put him onto six points. That's a big move for him. Second place is Andreas Johnson. Third, Matty Zegar. Peter Killerman looked an angry man as he went over the line. Killerman now knows that with two points from three rides, he's going to have to produce something special if he's going to make it through to the final tonight. But Matt Zianowski has just doubled his score there. That's transformed his night and given him a great chance because he's still got two rides to go. Yeah. He's on six points and generally you have to look for the eight-point mark to give you a shout. Yeah, by and large, eight points can get you in. Seven did last time with Harris creeping in, but... That was a super ride, and there's no doubt Janowski will be buoyed by that. He's a class rider. Janowski, Jonsson, Zegar, Killerman. That is the finishing order of heat number 10. Limbach on nine. He is dominating. He's well clear in this Grand Prix. Yeah, he's in a class of his own right now, and you're absolutely right. He is dominating proceedings. Uh, Janowski rode well there because uh, no race is easy, and Jonsson coming out of gate three puts him under a lot of pressure for a lap or two. Zegar will be kicking himself here, he missed it on the inside. 
Janowski makes a terrific uh, effort from gate two. Look at this from Jonsson, charging around the outside. Gets his back tire on the edge of that grip in the middle of the track and begins to put a lot of pressure on Janowski. Janowski has to slam the door shut there as they go into the third corner midway through the track. He then lifts and uh, they got a little bit out of shape, but the Polish man hangs onto the bike and picks up a really useful win. And uh, after a disappointing GP in uh, the Czech Republic, he's making good headway. He rides well in England, rode great for the Paul Pirates, won the championship for them. And uh, he's riding well again tonight. The noise you can hear is for Ty Wuppertgen, who goes off gate two here, but he's a man under pressure. He admits he's not making the starts. He's got Piotr Pawlitski on the inside of him, who won his last outing. He's off gate to Woffenden in blue. Bartosz Marslik, winner last time out. He's off gate three in white. And Nicky Pedersen of Denmark going off the outside in yellow. Nicky just seems to be struggling for speed in the engine right now. Yeah, he's talked about it on more than one occasion already this year, and the evidence is there to see. He's dropping the clutch about right, but just, just doesn't quite have the pace that he wants. Pavlitsky on the inside here, he'll be right up for this. So will Schmarslik, they both won last time out. Pedersen holding proceedings up, just coming up to tapes now. Wuffenden, the world champion, can he produce from gate number two now? Here we go then, heat number 11. Good start for Pavlitsky, he's made a good one now. Wuffenden tries the inside run, but there's no way through. And Wuffenden just trying everything there, but Pavlitsky has it. Now Wuffenden with a dive on the inside, but Pavlitsky's got lots of speed. Third place in white is Smarslik, and the man at the back is Nicky Pedersen, whose trouble might continues here. But the lead is with Piotr Pawlitski, he is looking superb. Wuffenden is trying everything here, he's going to try the inside run, but Pawlitski is riding nicely, Kel. Pawlitski out in front is riding a stormer here, Wuffenden working overtime in second place, Smarslik in third, Pedersen out of it in the back. Pawlitski looking for two consecutive race wins here in the Principality Stadium. Wuffenden with a lap to go, the world champion, George! hard, giving everything in second place, squares the corner off, the Polish man will think he's going to hang on. Well, the crowd are getting a little bit excited here, but Pawlitski has made a brilliant move, got lots of speed, Wuffenden on five from three now, the reigning champion, but Piotr Pawlitski has really come to the party, he is riding very nicely indeed right now. With a second successive win, he moves on to seven points from three rides. Looking good, Piotr Pawlitski. Yeah, he's doing the business, fair play. He's been in the wars coming into tonight. He's missed a meeting or two, but he looks refreshed. He's sharp, really sharp. Came under huge pressure, intimidated by the world champion behind him, but resisted that. Comes up with a great ride and wins two consecutive heats in the Principality Stadium. Brilliant ride from Pavlitsky. Seven points for him now as well. Brilliant effort. Pavlitsky the winner with Buffenden second. Smarslik was third. And this is how it looks now with Limbach on nine and Pavlitsky on seven so far. Smarslik and Buffenden just about in the top eight. Got to be in the top eight to make the semi finals. Pavlitsky, a man on form for sure. Yeah, and this is the reason why he had that inside gate. He made the start. And Wuffenden chucks uh, to the inside, puts him under all sorts of pressure throughout the four laps. Watch this again. He really is holding that inside. Wuffenden pushing him ever so hard. I thought momentarily he might be able to just shake Pavlitsky off the line, but fair play to Pavlitsky. Even though he did run a little wide there, he responded and had the speed to hang on to the lead, and Wuffenden, as hard as he tried back in second place, just couldn't find a way through. Nicky Pedersen struggling out the back, but Pavlitsky out in front. He's riding really well. He's riding with maturity tonight. His brother's in there with him, and both of them ride brilliantly, in actual fact. And Piotr, who had a period of time for the Wolverhampton team, is doing the business tonight. It certainly is. Here we see Chris Harris, who's in the white helmet color here. Big, big noise when his name was announced. From the British fans. Danny King off the inside. The wild card has really found uh, life hard tonight. Uh, real baptism, baptism of fire in Cardiff for Danny King. Freddie Lindgren goes off gate number two in blue. Chris Harris gate three white. They all need points, don't they, if they're going to have any chance at all of making the semi finals. Jason Doyle on four, he's off the outside. Yeah, Doyle's got to be favourite on paper. 
but he may be handicapped a little bit by the fact it's going from the outside gate. Interesting to see how it goes. Lindgren, fancied before tonight, has struggled so far, needs a big ride. He certainly does. Oh, oh, he's got a little bit of movement at the start, and yes, the steam toft has took the red lights on straight away. There's Lindgren. a bit of pressure on there, Kelv. Yeah, yeah, there is. You're absolutely right. And Lindgren, just with one point to his name, jumps too early and is a lucky, a lucky man not to touch the tapes. It's very close, I tell you. Very close indeed. And uh, he'll, uh, he'll need... Let's just watch this again. Cool. Do you know what? That must be millimetres if he didn't if he didn't touch them. Well, it's all four back. He might... Uh, yeah, he'll be, he'll be relieved, but Jason Dorr there in picture, they're just fueling, and they come out with clutch coolers. You'll see them, they've got batteries underneath them. They're fans out of cars, out of heater fans. And they just blow air on the clutch just to keep it down at the right temperature so it doesn't burn out. Vital, that is. And uh, they can just see it there. There you go. They are really very uh, key, particularly on a hot evening. And um, uh, they are useful and on the engine as well. But uh, furious work going on. Chain being sprayed as well on the front primary chain. Keep that nice and lubed up. Doyle, who has been already entertaining so far this evening, going from the outside, will have to come up with an entertaining ride, I tell you, because it's not easy from the outside tonight. Absolutely. After this race, there will be another grading break, but a more uh, thorough one, if you like, after heat number 12. And every rider will have completed three rides as well, so we'll get a real picture of uh, how it's shaping up. But I can tell you the race for the top eight is very tight indeed. Heat number 12, the restart. Danny King off the inside in red. Freddie Lindgren goes off gate number two in blue. Gate three in white is Chris Harris. And third in yellow, Jay, and, uh, off the outside, I should say, in yellow, giving him third place before the race has started. Goodness me. Jason Doyle off the outside gate. He won't thank you for that. He's looking for a win. Um, <laughs> that's not my prediction, by the way, third. You've given up on that. You've retired from prediction. Absolutely. Yeah. But Doyle on the outside, it will be a tough test from there. You can see the dirt's already building up against the fence. Great camera shot, that. Love that one. Boys just beginning to concentrate, looking for the green light. Here we go. Second time of asking. Here we go. Danny King's made a good start off the inside, but oh. Doyle is there. Lovely move around the outside. Can Danny King hold the line? He can, but Doyle's got too much speed. Jason Doyle comes around the outside run now. Now Freddie Lindgren is trying the inside on Danny King here. Chris Harris is at the back. Lindgren is really pushing Danny King hard, though. Yeah. Now the lead is with Doyle, second place King. Looks like he's going to get his first points on the board in the Grand Prix. And Freddie Lindgren is third. Yes, he is indeed. Doyle, what a start that was from the outside. Showed real class there, came charging across. Danny King just lifting there, losing momentum, and Freddie Lindgren was looking for a way through. There's a battle for second and third. There's a last lap to go. Harris is out the back. But Jason Doyle has cleared off. He's a dominant move now. Danny King on the edge of the dirt, riding brilliantly for second place. He is indeed. Jason Doyle of Australia. Got a lot of fans here from Swindon. And indeed, Somerset, where he's still very popular. He has won heat number 12. And Jason Doyle, with seven points from three rides, is looking set. Doesn't need to do much more in his last couple of rides to book a place in the semi finals. He is going to be in the world title race this year, the way things are looking, and certainly going into the World Cup break, he's going to be in a great position, pushing hard. Oh, absolutely, Nigel. Uh, he's top quality, and the confidence he's gained from that Grand Prix victory two weeks ago is, you can see it on track. He's flying out there tonight. 12 races gone, every rider has completed three rides now. Limbach nine, Doyle and Pavlitsky seven apiece. Well, Antonio Limbach is uh, dominating uh, proceedings, but uh, one or two riders, I think, a little later on are going to have something to say about that. And Jason Doyle, I'm sure, will be one of those. Uh, we'll see it again from the outside gate. Makes a peach of a start. That is really a great effort from the Australian. Um, got himself in a nice rut there, right up against the uh, safety fence. And the bike absolutely flies into that first turn. Danny King in second place. Rides really well here, I've got to say. All credit to him. He, he didn't have a point to his name coming into this uh, third ride, and he rode strongly for second place. But Jason Doyle in front, two wins and a third, seven points. He's having a great run. Danny King, of course, they know each other from racing in Britain, of course. But Doyle and King will be pleased with that. 
uh, Jason Doerr right now is the real deal. Nicky Pedersen then making his way around the third and fourth turn. Three times world champion on a new machine here now as well. And here's the standings. Greg Hancock 61, Tyrone Wolfenham 53, and Doyle and Holder level on 49 apiece now. It's a fascinating title race. And uh, after tonight, five of the 11 rounds, we have the World Cup break, of course. Jason Doyle going off the inside in red, seven points to his name. Matty Zagar getting two in blue, plenty of speed for Zagar tonight. Nicky Pedersen going off gate number three, under pressure, needs points. And off the outside in yellow, the fastest man in Cardiff so far, Antonio Limbach. Yeah, you blink, you miss him. He is flying tonight, no doubt about that. Doyle and Zagar have got great speed too. This is a really, really hot contest here. Nicky Pedersen is the odd man bout, unfortunately. Probably coming out of the worst gate as well. So Pedersen under a lot of pressure, not enough points to his name, and he needs to come up with a big win. Here we go, settling down, racing about to get underway again. Heat number 13. Doyle's made a beauty off the inside gate. Now, this is a test for the unbeaten Limbach, who's got lots of speed. Zagar second, and Limbach has just gone from second into third, from last into third to get the better of Pedersen. Now he's going to hunt down Zagar. He's got lots of speed. He's chasing hard up the Slovenian. The lead, though, is with Jason Doyle. Zagar second, Limbach up the inside. Fabulous move from Limbach. Doyle absolutely majestic away from the inside. I thought that was going to be a bit of a showdown, but Doyle's made light work of that. Pedersen's having a nightmare. He's out the back. The change of equipment hasn't worked for him. Doyle is flying. Limbach, to his credit, he's had to come from the outside. This will be the first point he'll drop in the evening after four rides. But Jason Doyle, a winner two weeks ago, winning race for fun in the Principality Stadium, looking at business out in front. Yeah, Jason Doyle takes a chequered flag on one wheel. He's a stylish rider these days, Jason Doyle. Moves into double figures, he can put him down for a place in the semi-finals. Antonio Limbach passed Pedersen, then he passed Zagar, and he can put Limbach down for a place in the semi-finals as well, because he is on 11, Doyle on 10. And those two are set for an extended run in the Grand Prix tonight. You can't have seven rides if you reach the final of a Grand Prix meeting. Doyle looks really quick, Kelf. Yeah, what a start from the inside, but you're spot on. He is fast. Antonio Limbach's fast as well. And those two, two boys, I'm sure we're going to see plenty of them this evening. Doyle, Limbach, Zagar, Patterson then, and uh, this is what it means overall. Limbach on 11, Doyle on 10. Now, you can put those down for a place in the semi final, but look at Nicky Patterson on three, Zagar on seven. Still needs a little bit of work to do in his last ride to book his place in the semis. Yeah, you're right there. Zagar, who started so fast, has faded subsequently. The two third places, not really what he was looking for. But Doyle, after winning first time out, then he had a third place. The last two rides have just been fabulous. The inside gate works well for him. All credit to Antonio Limbach. It's round uh, Nicky Pedersen initially, and then takes care of Zagar. And uh, Zagar there running a little wide, and that allows Antonio Limbach. He pounces. He's uh, very confident. Didn't. Uh, he didn't wait there, wasn't very polite, just got in there and did the business. Slam dunk of a move there, Knight. Goodness me. Up the inside of Zagar, and Antonio's doing the business. But Jason Doyle, this is a great way. It's nip and tuck between those two boys now. Doyle and Limbach are going great guns. All smiles in the Doyle camp. And a busy week for Jason Doyle, who uh, rode on Monday and Thursday for Swindon in the Elite League here in the UK. Um, fresh from his winner in Prague. Can he get a second straight GP win? I uh, wouldn't put it past him. He's looking good for it so far. He's um, got plenty of speed. Peter Kilman now off the inside of Heat 14. Danny King gate two in blue. Piotr Pavlitsky gate three in white. And Chris Holder, he's still got a bit of work to do, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. He goes off the outside in yellow. Yeah, he didn't score last time. And. Um, Excuse me, no, he got a third place from, they had to work hard, he was at the back, he got through, and he's got two gate fours, that won't be relishing that, and a gate three, so he's under pressure. Here we go. Pavlitsky's made a lovely start from gate number three, that's brilliant from the pole, what a start he's made. Danny King has gone around the outside and has got second spot. 
Kimmelman's third, and Chris Holder is in the back right now, but Danny King's on the pace and looking good. He's having a real go here in the blue helmet colour, but Piotr Pavlinski in white is kicking on. He's going to move on to ten points as things stand. What a night Pavlinski is having. It's absolutely his best Grand Prix easily. Looking for his third win on the evening. Danny King is riding so much better in second place. Has got plenty of speed. He's pulling away from Peter Kilderman, Chris Holder. That's to his credit, great credit in actual fact. But Piotr Pavlinski, he is having the meeting of his life so far. Brilliant stuff from the young Polish boy out in front. Yep, and now Chris Holder having a go at Peter Kilderman for third place. But Piotr Pavlinski is going to take the checkered flag. And the young man from Lechno in Poland moves on to ten points. Second spot, Danny King. The ride from King has plenty of pace there now, it seems. And at third place there in red, Peter Kilderman with Chris Holder training at the back, so 14 heats gone here, and Piotr Pavlitsky into double figures, and my goodness, he really has got a lot of power in those engines, riding nicely, and he can put him down for a place in the semi-finals now as well. Absolutely, and the start he made from gate three was textbook, a masterclass, you'd say, and once again, the composure, the focus he had once he was out in front was out of the top draw. Pavlicki is riding out of his skin tonight. Yeah, the result, Pavlicki the winner with Danny King second, Peter Kellerman was third, Chris Holder trailing in the back, and what it means overall now is that Piotr Pavlicki moves on to ten points from four rides. Danny King has certainly done well in his last couple of rides as well. He's on four points, Chris Holder on five, Peter Kellerman of Denmark on three points now. Great stuff from Piotr Pavlitsky. Absolutely, and, you know, you can't take it away from him. The start he makes here from gate three is just sensational. It's tough from there. Holder's force wide in the first corner, but Pavlitsky has just ridden a beautiful race. Great stuff from Danny King. After a poor start tonight, the British champion comes good when he really means it, picks up another second place, and that is to his credit. Piotr Pavlitsky, though, you've got to say, has come here and he means business and is enjoying the best Grand Prix of his career, his short Grand Prix career so far. Ten points, he's into the semi-final and uh, he's looking really good indeed, he's enjoying himself. He is indeed, so we move on to heat number 15 now. Terrific atmosphere here in Cardiff tonight. Niels Christian Everson under pressure off the inside gate in red, he rides for Kings Lynn here in the UK. This man off the outside, Matze Janowski with six points to his name as well. It really is crunch time for these riders. Everson off the inside, Bartosz Marslik, who's been entertaining tonight, goes off gate two in blue. Chris Harris is off gate three in white. And Matsy Janowski goes off the outside in yellow. Here we go with heat number 15. Yeah, Janowski was impressive last time. He made a really good start from gate two and just blew the opposition away. Everson, I've got to say, has been disappointing. He's a rider of great quality. He's won the uh, Danish Championship again this year and is in pretty good form, uh, in truth. But uh, tonight he's found it really tough, so man on the inside needs to come good. Mike draw and away from the start they go. And Smarslik's made a good one off game number two in blue. And coming round the outside is Matt Sianowski with Everson under pressure now. Harris is at the back. But Bartosz Smarslik with a good ride so far. Second place, Janowski. Third is Everson, who's not having it. The best of nights tonight for the man in blue here. Bartosz Marslik is looking spectacular, but his fellow countryman is chasing him hard. Well, the Poles are enjoying themselves this evening in the Principality Stadium, that's for sure. Pavlitsky is having a great night. Smarslik riding fabulous here. Janowski in second place, hunting him down. Everson has got more speed, but needs a little bit more of a space by the Polish men. Harris is out the back. A lap to go. Smarslik bouncing off the fence as he enters the corner. He's really enjoying this heat. Yeah, Bartosz Marslik looking superb here now. This is going to put him onto eight points and give him a real chance at a semi final spot here in Cardiff tonight. Smarslik the race winner then. Three big points for him. Second spot, Matsu Janowski. Third, Niels Christian Everson, Chris Harris at the back, but the Polish riders having a good evening here tonight, and of course the Speedway World Cup coming up later this month, if that bodes well for the Polish side, Smarslik looking great, and uh, very, very fast indeed. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, they're coming in form at the right time, the World Cup is just a few short weeks away, and with the performances of those three boys here on show tonight, you've got to say, 
They've got to be one of the favourites for the World Cup. Smarslik, Jirovski, Everson and Harris, the finishing order here. Smarslik very quick and always good to watch on a bike because he's so spectacular. Yeah. Level with Janowski on eight points apiece now. Remember, the top eight riders make it through to the semi-finals here in the Principality Stadium, Cardiff tonight. They do, and um, uh, they're looking set for that. Great effort there from Smarslik after a couple of crashes early on in heat number one. He's put that to the back of his mind and he's producing some super performances now. He gets to the first corner, he gets the better of Everson, who just can't touch him away from the tapes. Janowski then comes roaring around the outside, gets the better of the Danish man. I thought for a moment that Janowski may actually get uh, right on the curtails of um, Schmalslick, but it's not the case. The man in blue, he's the man in front, and he's looking really good tonight. And all three of them look like they may well make the semi-finals tonight. Yeah, plenty of Polish flags around Cardiff here tonight as well, which is great to see. Bartosz Schmalslick. Eight points and uh, a class act. Yeah, he is, and he's got the inside gate to come, so he'll be pleased with that. And that's his dad there. It's a real family affair, in actual fact, in that camp. And um, they go about their business very professionally. And he's got one race to come, and he's got the inside gate. What a lineup this is. Goodness me. Five world titles between the uh, inside two gates. Ty Wuffenden is off the inside in red. Greg Hancock, gate two in blue. Gate three, Freddie Lindgren in white. And Andreas Johnson off the outside in yellow. A big race with points on the line and every point in the World Championship, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, counts towards your overall total over 11 rounds. You know, this is not the sort of race you want to come into desperate for points, is it? Because nobody's going to give them to you, that's for sure, because there's such top quality in it. Wuffenden has parked right up on the inside, right next to the white line. He's looking for a little bit of extra now. Here we go, heat number 16 it is, oh. and Wuffenden has been left standing at the start. Hancock with a trademark gate, made it look easy there. Wuffenden is in second spot right now, third in yellow is Andreas Johnson. Freddie Lindgren's at the back, but Hancock, who was passed in his previous ride, surely he's not going to allow that happen again. But Wuffenden is chasing hard, and Wuffenden's got a bit of speed here, and he's closing the gap on Hancock. Hancock out of gate two, made a fabulous start. Wuffenden missed it again. Hancock now searching for a bit more speed, moves a little wider, they've left the opposition. Jonsson and Lindgren out the back, the two Swedes all out of it this time. Wuffenden really beginning to strut his stuff. Hancock beginning to move inside, outside, there's a lap to go. The old master out in front, looking like he should hang on. Yeah, Hancock surely has done enough here to see off the challenge of Ty Wuffenden. It's a big three points, but Greg Hancock just has a look, a look over his shoulder. He saw Wuffenden was there, and that leaves Wuffenden hopes of a place in the semi-final on a knife edge. He's going to have to get points in his last ride. Luckily, if you like, luckily being the word that I say is uh, a little bit controversial, but it's all part of the draw. Uh, he's off the inside gate, so that might just help Wuffenden through, Kel. Yeah, but I think the biggest thing for Ty this evening, he's already said it himself, is the fact that he isn't dropping the clutch at the right time, and he actually missed the start once again. He was left standing there. He was, yeah, a poor start from him. Greg Hancock, though, what a start. A super ride out in front from a big pressure from Wuffenden. Yeah, Hancock coming up, Wuffenden second, Jonsson third. And this is what it means overall. Wuffenden just in the top eight, Hancock on eight. Lindback the leader on 11. Greg Hancock riding uh, beautifully once again. Just having a little debrief with the team. And, uh, just seeing how it all works. Uh, the start itself, again, you, if you want to learn how to start a speedway bike, then that is the man to watch. He just very rarely fails from the tapes, and he produces uh, a masterclass once again. Wuffenden threw everything at it. You can't deny that uh, the world champion is giving it his all here, but he isn't sharp away from the tapes. He looks just a little, uh, I don't know, just not really quite sharp enough at this stage, and he's going to have to pick that up, otherwise, well, Greg Hancock is going to be pulling away at the top of the table and the championship will be his, you know, like he is doing the business tonight after a disappointing opening ride. This yep. is our final Grand Prix until August. Uh, we'll have a five of the 11. And the World Cup break is coming up next. 
four super meetings in prospect for the Monster Energy FIM Speedway World Cup. Yeah, really looking forward to it. And you look at Jason uh, Doyle's card here, you know, his scores from the, the earlier Grand Prix. The second and the third rounds, he only got 12 points in total from those two meetings. He got 17 last time and 13 in the first round. So injuries certainly held him back there, but uh, he's making up for lost time here this evening. So here's Antonio Limbach, Piotr Pavlitsky, Andreas Johnson and Chris Harris is your gate positions. Meet number 17. This will be a great race to watch, I'm sure, with Lindbach and Pavlitsky off the inside two gates. They've been great tonight. They have, and Pavlitsky has been a surprise for me. I don't think he would have been on many favourites, uh, um, or many people's uh, favourite coming in for this evening, but he's certainly proving everybody wrong. He's uh, riding out of his skin. Antonio Lindbach has been fabulous, and gate one, I'm sure, he would love to finish on 14 points and have that first pick for the semi-final. Johnson in gate three. He's under pressure. He's ridden well tonight. Needs a big ride now. Heat number 17 here in Cardiff. Who's going to get to that first turn? It looks like Pavlitsky's got the drop. Super ride from Piotr Pavlitsky. And now here comes Johnson around the outside, but Limbach's got a lot of speed. The man on the back in yellow is Chris Harris, and Johnson has just come through into second spot. He knows how important this race is for Andreas Johnson. And look how tight the front three are. Piotr Pavlitsky has the lead and he's riding quite beautifully now. Pavlitsky out in front, brilliant stuff of the Polish man once again, but he's under all sorts of pressure. Andreas Johnson hunting him down, desperate for the three points. Antonio Lindbach was just out battled there by Johnson. Johnson's in the second place. Pavlitsky in the middle of the track, really winding it on, doing the business with a lap to go. Has Johnson got any answers for the Polish man in front? Does not like it because Piotr Pavlinski has got way too much speed right now. He's got the inside. Oh, oh and a real battle to the line, and Johnson just gets there for second. I thought Limbach may have just picked his pocket there, but Piotr Pavlinski riding quite brilliantly. And Piotr Pavlinski has scored 13 points from five rides. What a night for the man from Lezno. A stunning display, and he is going to be out in the semi finals. And he's got lots of speed and looking very, very classy here tonight. Too right, he is doing the business. And uh, suddenly from nowhere, Piotr Pavlitsky is coming of age here. Four consecutive race wins with a third first time out. What a night of speedway it has been for him. I'm sure there's a huge smile on that face underneath that helmet. He is riding out of his skin this evening and uh, doing the business. He's in. Looking, uh, looking to go further. Yep, and Andreas Johnson was in second spot then. That moves him on to eight points now, and he's in the top eight. So um, that's important for him. And Pavlitsky, the leader of the Grand Prix on 13. Lindbach's been leading it all night, but not now. Pavlitsky is the man. Super ride from him. Four straight wins for Pavlitsky. Fantastic stuff from Pavlitsky. Terrific riding from him. Got to say that we'll see it again. The gate two position works a treat for him. I thought Antonio Limbach may be able to get the better of him, but he can't because Pavlitsky is so sharp away from the tapes. Again, we see it. They get to the first corner, a bit of contact, but the Polish man for the confidence says that first corner is mine. Andreas Johnson rides strongly, gets the better of Limbach, and he gets around the outside. And well, Johnson may have to be a patient. He has had a win. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it works out. Last corner, bit of uh, action as they chase towards the checker flag with Jonsson just about getting the better of Antonio Limbach, who makes that move. But uh, it's uh, Jonsson who gets the two points, but Pavlitsky is doing the business. He's having a great night. Very much so, a huge race coming up for the home fans. Ty Wofferden is off the inside gate, the reigning world champion. And uh, he really does need to get into the semi-finals, otherwise it will allow Greg Hancock the opportunity to really kick on and open up quite a lead in the World Championship race at the World Cup break. Wuffington off the inside, Peter Kellerman gate two, Jason Doyle gate three, and Niels Christian Everson off the outside in the <laughs> yellow helmet colour. Just the three points for Niels so far tonight, but what can Wuffington do? The hopes of the home fans very much on him. He's off the inside gate. Can he make a start for the first time in five tonight? Wolfenden now going into that first turn. He's not quite got there. Yes, he has. 
now. Can Doyle get there? No, he's at the back, but Wolfenden has the lead now. He gets 10 points in this one, too, and Everson's oh. gone down. Everson is down, and it looks like he's going to stay down as well, and the red lights are going to come on. Not sure if there was contact. Doyle was forced wide in the first corner. He then switched to the inside, going down the back straight. And Everson still didn't make the start, did bike's he? Bike's not digging in and jumping forward and uh, he's finding it really difficult. Let's keep an eye on Doyle. Doyle goes to the inside now. Everson didn't quite see it there, unfortunately. I'm not sure if there's contact. Everson does go down. This is the angle. Just may have taken his leg away. Will Doyle get excluded or will Jesper Steentoft? As a consequence of this... Wow. There's no contact, is there? Doesn't look like it. Looks like Everson's going to go here. This just, just want to be sure that there's no... Yeah, he's gone. He, Everson, Everson is, is out. Gone. Well, that's a miserable night for Everson, who won here last year. And, uh, Three points tonight. Not good, and he'll be bitterly disappointed with that. And uh, I don't really understand where that's come from, because normally he's so good at this level. Three points, that's really a disaster for Everson, you've got to say. Well, Niels hasn't had the best of years, has he, in the Grand Prix so far, let's be honest. He... Um, He's only got one double-figure score, and that was in Prague a couple of weeks ago. And he'll go into the World Cup break with a bit of soul-searching, I think. Well, absolutely. I think that's a good way to describe it, soul-searching. And uh, it is unusual. I thought for a moment there was contact, but no, Everson's going down of his own accord there. Maybe he was just concerned that maybe Doyle was going to hit him. It was a move that Doyle makes. It's a hard move, but it's tough out there. It's GP Speedway. And I don't know whether Everson thought that Doyle was going to clatter him on the way through, but he doesn't. And unfortunately for Everson, he slips down. And uh, it's absolutely fabulous. What a move it was. And uh, Doyle will be pleased to be in the rerun with an opportunity to get more points. Yeah, uh, commiserations to Niels Christian Everson. Everson just trudging back to the pits. It's not the night for him and i'm sure he'll be reluctant to actually talk to us but um, uh, it's a shame for him because ordinarily he is a potential winner here and he won't be this evening he'll want to forget this one and try and get a good world cup under his belt and then bounce back when we return to grand prix action in august and ty Wolfen and the reigning champion has got to do it all again here he just about got there um, was the leader, but wasn't convincing away from the start. I thought Killerman made a better start than him there. You were right. And uh, Wolfenden has had problems to get off the start line tonight. He actually admitted, very honest, in his uh, interview earlier, he wasn't dropping the clutch at the right time, and I would agree with that. He seemed to drop the clutch OK uh, in the original stages of this race, but the bike didn't really fire into the first corner. So here we go again, Ty Wuffenden off the inside, Peter Killerman off two, Jason Doyle off three. Wuffenden was on the verge of a place in the semi-finals there. With the lead, it would have put him onto ten points. And that would have been enough for a place in the semi-finals. Now he's got to do it again. But it's, starting will be a concern. This man, Doyle, is absolutely racing out of his skin. He is. He's got a uh, logo on his peak there, the man with a the van. I'll tell you what, he's a man on a mission tonight, I'll tell you. Because <laughs> he is absolutely flying. Here we go. Yep, P number 18, here we go. That's a better start from Wolfington, isn't it? Much better start. He's got the inside run now. Doyle is going high towards the fence, and Doyle's got lots Whoa! of speed. Here comes Doyle. Wolfington holds the line. But is Doyle going to go round him? That's a clever line by Ty Wolfington. Oh! He closes the door. Whoa! Oh, it looked as though Doyle was going to come off hitting the fence. Doyle second, Killerman third. Was Wolfing a little bit naughty there? Slams the door shut, he was in charge. Desperate for points, the world champion. Ruthless in front. Doyle had to hang on to the motorbike and just about stays on board. Wolfing and out in front, he needed this. Really having to dig deep tonight because it hasn't been going the way he would have liked. Doyle now back in second. Killerman's had a disappointing night. Wolfenden with this. We're going to see more of him. He'll be hoping to build on this right now. Well, Wolfenden is going to move on to ten points, and that is a reasonable score now. That's more like it from Ty Wolfenden. But we've had to wait until heat number 18 to see the world champion win in Cardiff. That was a big ride from Ty Wolfenden. And... Uh, Jason Doyle, to be fair, went over and shook his hand, so no hard feelings. That was just racing.
look what it means to Wuffenden now. Relief in the Wuffenden camp. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he needed that big time, Nigel. Relief is exactly how to describe that. Delighted to delight the home crowd here. They've been starved of British winners so far this evening. And Wuffenden finally comes up with a heat win that they've been really relishing and looking forward to. Wuffenden 10 points, we're going to see more of him. Can he build on that now? Can he delight this crowd in the semi-final? Wuffenden wins, heat 18. Doyle Mike. second, Killerman third. And Doyle had lots of speed there. At one stage it looked like he might have got round Wuffenden. But that is a huge result for Wuffenden. He's saved his best till last. Yeah, it is, and that's uh, what champions do, Nigel. And uh, hasn't been going well. And all of a sudden, PK is uh, working there. He comes up with it, but I think this is largely down to the man on the machine here. He suddenly realises he's under pressure, makes a good start. Doyle is really pushing hard, and this is really where he had to be ruthless out in front. You don't win world championships without being ruthless. Doyle, Doyle was lucky to stay up right there. Watch this again. This is Woof the moment. Yeah, Wuffenden moves right across in front of him. Doyle slams against the fence. Peter Kilderman had to then put the brakes on as well. Wuffenden delighted. And by golly, did he need that. The celebration says it all, really. He knew he was under pressure and he's delivered the goods. That was a huge ride from Ty Wuffen and twice world champion. And we're going to see him again in the semi-finals. Well, five points from his last two rides. Gate number one has kind of got him out of trouble. He probably will not get that in the semi-finals because other riders are going to have picks in front of him with Doyle. Then back on 12 apiece and Pavlinski on 13. They'll get the pigs. So there was still work to be done in that camp, but uh, nonetheless, they're going in the right direction. Bartosz Marszlik off the inside here from uh, Poland on eight points and riding beautifully. Matty Zegar needs points here. He's on seven. Danny King goes off gate three and wide. I think he's uh, quitted himself pretty well after a tough start tonight. And Greg Hancock goes off the outside in yellow. Yeah, Greg Hancock off his bike doing some gardening there on the outside. The other three are ready. Zagard's got fresh clutch plates in here. He was saying that he had some clutch issues. Hancock just now getting up on his motorbike. Yeah, he's rolling in. We're ready to go. Svarslik on the inside. Good race, this. Zagar on gate two. He needs a big ride. Here we go. Heat number 19. Svarslik's made a good gate there. Now can Zagar move the switch on the inside? What can Hancock do? He's at the back at the moment. Yeah. Danny King comes through into second. Danny King is going wide and he loves doing that. Danny King. Danny King comes through to the lead! What a ride from the British wildcard! That's what he's all about, Danny King. Oh. Battle with the man in red here, Bartosz Smarslik. This would be a moment that Danny King will remember for the rest of his life. Smarslik second, and Zagar has come through into third, ahead of Greg Hancock. It's a bit like buses, isn't it? Yeah. You have to wait all day to see one, and then suddenly two come along at the same time, but I may have given the commentators curse. King and Smarslik having a fabulous race out in front. Hancock's out the back, but Danny King, can he hang on? Smarslik coming on hard in second place. Down to the line, let's listen to the crowd. Wow! What a moment for Danny King of Great Britain. He's won a race in Cardiff. He's won a race as the wild card. Look what it means to him. He's celebrating like he's won the British title again. Well done, Danny King. The Principality Stadium salutes you. What a ride it was as well. He had to fight for that tooth and nail right to the checkered flag. King comes up with a storm. He was right there in the first corner. Smarslik there was on the inside and he ran round in that dirt. He loves it out there. We saw that in the British Championship. Danny King wins a race in the Principality Stadium. Heat 19 is Danny King's. What a ride! Fabulous ride! Where did that come from? Out of the top drawer, that's where that came from, <laughs> Nigel. Nice. Danny King the winner and a super nice guy as well, brilliant. And uh, Greg Hancock on eight points now. So uh, Bartosz Marslik on ten. Zagar on five, eight points as well. Danny King won't make the semi-finals, but well, I think we should just put him up a couple of extra places. He deserves to after that. Well, we put him in anyway, <laughs> weren't we? We're totally biased. And Danny King, we should have a big smile. Yes. Um, I was chatting with somebody earlier today, and I thought if Dan, Danny could win a race this evening, it would be a great achievement. And he's pulled it off, and in fine style and in a terrifically competitive race. 
He loves riding in the dirt on the outside. We saw that in Manchester when he won the British Championship. The, uh, the dirt was there for him in heat 19. He allows the bike to get in the dirt, wheels in line and shows great class and speed because Smarslick puts him under massive pressure. Just a little bit. Yeah, and King is <laughs> over, yeah, exactly. And we're seeing it here, you know, like Schmarslick's enjoying a good night of speed where the poles are in actual fact. But Danny King pulls it off and uh, quite rightly, you know, just, uh, he celebrates in style. So congratulations to Danny King. That's made it all worthwhile tonight. He's enjoyed that one. He'll never forget that, will he? Richie Hawkins alongside him, his big pal. And it's, a, sh it's a shame that um, the meeting didn't start in his third race. Exactly, because he'd be in the hunt for winning it. You know, he only dropped two points from his last three heats. If only he could have got a little bit more out of his first two. Maybe he was a little nervous in his first two rides. But what a ride, because Smarslick threw everything at him. Janowski off the inside, Nicky Pedersen off two. Chris Holder goes off gate three and White needs points here. And Freddie Lindgren is going off the outside gate. Here we go, heat number 20 after this race. We will know the semi-finalists. Big race coming up, and it's a good start from Janowski off the inside gate. Nicky pedersen has gone high into the dirt, and now Holder's having a go. The man in yellow and black, Freddie Lindgren's coming through as well, but the lead is with the man in red, Matt Sajanowski. Nicky Pedersen's going to have a go, he's in second spot. Third now is Lindgren has charged hard under Chris Holder. It's not been Holder's night, has it? Former winner here in Cardiff, but Janowski kicking on. He is indeed. I think Janowski coming under pressure from Pedersen in second place has had a disappointing night. Holder and Freddie Lingwin also, this is not what they were looking for, they needed more than this. Patrick Janowski, I've got to say, has responded well this evening, he's riding very well. The Polish push, oh! Nicky Pedersen's went square there, very nearly caught the back of Janowski, just about gets out of his way, but Maciej Janowski out in front, this is a super ride. Yeah, Janowski's going to take the chequered flag here and move on to 11 points, that's a good night's work for Magic. Nicky Pedersen really worked hard and looked to have a little bit more speed in the bike there. Nicky Pedersen and um, Chris Holder battling away with Freddie Lindgren there too, but that was a good ride. We've now had the 20 races to uh, establish the semi-finalists now here in the uh, Adrian Flux FIM British Speedway Grand Prix, but Matt Zianowski with 11 points. It's been a good night for the Poles, hasn't it, tonight? Yeah. With Zianowski uh, finishing on 11. And Piotr Pavlitsky is the man who leads the GP going into those semi-finals with 13 points. And then we will confirm the top eight very shortly. Yeah, the Polish boys are doing the business, and the three of them through to the semi-finals. I think that's the first time that's happened this season. And um, Piotr Pavlitsky... Bartosz Marslik and this man, Maciej Janowski, are through to the top eight this evening. And he uses the inside gate very well indeed. Nicky Pedersen showed a lot more speed this time out. Must have made um, uh, a few adjustments. And he rode strongly. And it's disappointing nights for Freddie Lingwin and Chris Holder out the back. They won't uh, be taking any further part tonight. And that is a bit of disappointment, particularly for Holder, who has ridden so well in the earlier Grand Prix. Pedersen there getting a little bit out of shape, but... Janowski is quick out in front, celebrates in style. And uh, the three of them are through and they're looking really strong tonight. So, yeah, Janowski through to the semi-finals on 11 points. What will the semi-final draw look like? Or who will pick what? Let's head down to the pits and Steve Brandon. So all the numbers have been worked out and we're ready to start the draw now. So we'll get Piotr Pavlitsky coming forward for first pick in semi-final one tonight. He's going to uh, have first choice for the first time in his Grand Prix career, and he's going to take gate one in red. Matche Janowski's coming up second. He's got second pick this evening. Uh, he's going to take gate two in blue. Ty Wolfen has uh, not got his gating gloves on, but he's coming forward for third pick in semi-final. No hesitation, he's going to take uh, gate three in white. And Greg Hancock, wearing the yellow race jacket, has been left with no choice but to go in gate four in yellow. So just confirmation of the lineup for semi-final one. We've got Piotr Pavlitsky in red, Matt Janowski in blue, Ty Wolfenden in white, and Greg Hancock in yellow. So we get the boys lined up and we'll start bringing them forward now. Jason Doyle's gonna come forward for first pick in uh, semi-final two. 
Oh, here's a, yep, he's going to go off gate one in white. He was gate one in uh, red. He was teasing me. Antonio Lindback was second choice. Maybe he knew something with the race jacket he's wearing, but uh, I don't think he'll cause any confusion. He will take gate two in blue. Bartosz Schmarslik, another good light for the young pole. And he's coming forward. And again, no hesitation to take gate three in white. And Andreas Johnson, like Greg Hancock, left with no choice but to go off the outside in yellow. Good semi final qualification, though, and there's more points to be had tonight. So, uh, confirmation of the lineup for semi final two. We've got Jason Doyle in red, Antonio Lindback in blue, Bartosz Maslik in white, and Andreas Jonsson in yellow. So, there's the uh, semi finals then, and uh, it's all set up nicely. And we can't wait, Kel. No, two super looking semi finals, and uh, three Polish uh, boys in there, and uh, they'll be chuffed to bits with that. So. First semi-final coming up. Pavlitsky, Janowski, Woffington and Hancock is your lineup. It's a mouth-watering prospect. And semi-final number one is on the way. What a lineup for the first semi-final here in Cardiff. It's Piotr Pavlitsky off the inside. 13 big points tonight. Matsyanovsky off gate number two in blue. Ty Wofferden, the world champion of gate number three in white, the series leader. Greg Hancock off the outside in yellow. It doesn't get much bigger and better than this. Fabulous lineup for his semi final number one night. The dynamic on the outside is intriguing. It's the top two in the world going head to head, but uh, they've had to scrape into the semi final because the two Polish boys have outperformed them in the first five rides they've had. And Pavlitsky in particular has been fabulous. And he had the first pick and didn't hesitate and went straight for the inside. Wuffenden has been finding starting tough tonight. He looks like he's got speed, but um, at this level, if you're giving uh, everybody else a head start, it's very difficult, no matter what your name is. Hancock on the outside, tough from there. Brilliant lineup for the first semi. It is the inside gate, advantageous. The fast starting Hancock goes off gate number four. Which way is this going to go now? Wolfenden off three has made an absolute beauty. What a start from Ty Wolfenden, and Hancock has come through into second spot as well from gate number four. Just as I was saying, the outside gates are advantageous. My goodness, the inside gates are advantageous. The outside gates are leading the race now. Wolfenden from Hancock, and Pavlitsky comes through into third. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? The stats mean nothing. Nothing at all. World champion out in front, out of gate three, makes an absolute stormer. Hancock, brilliant in the first corner, gets the better of the Polish boys. Defying the odds, the top two in the world, looking like they're set for the final. The world champion out in front. Can he win his second race of the night? Dare I say it, can Ty Wovenen win the British Grand Prix for the first time? He's in the final, and so is Greg Hancock. The top two riders in the world right now are through to the final in Cardiff. What a ride from Ty Wuffenden from gate number three. What a moment that is. Two but wins on the trot. Finally, Nigel gets his trapping hand out. Made an absolute fabulous start out of gate three. Blew away to the first turn. Hancock joined in there in the first corner. The class coming through there. Maybe nerves. Don't know what it was for the Polish boys because they had been so good coming into the semi-final, but gates three and four, you wouldn't have fancied it. But suddenly the class really came through in semi-final number one. The world champion, what a master class he put on there in the first semi-final. Woffenden from Hancock then, the first two in the semi-final. It means that Woffenden is now on 13 points, quite a recovery. He's really got his night going now like a juggernaut. Can he keep it going in the final? Well, absolutely. Peter Carlson gives him a cuddle in there. They hug each other, and this is the reason why. Out in front, Wuffenden wins comfortably. That's the best we've seen from him all night long. Hancock in second place. Pavlitsky comes through in third with Janowski out of the back. Here we go. This is the crucial moment. Wuffenden finally gets it right. The bike absolutely perfect to the first corner. Pavlitsky very nearly runs in the side of him, and Hancock pounces. Hancock pounces as Pavlitsky pulls this locker now, kills his momentum. Hancock's in the right place at the right time, comes around the outside and says, thanks very much, I'm through to the final. Woofenden out in front, all of a sudden finds the speed at the crucial moment. And by my reckoning, 
Woffenden has closed the gap in a title race to five points. 66 Hancock, 61 Woffenden. But they will go head to head in the final. Whatever happens, the title race is going to be very close going into the World Cup break. It is indeed, and how he's turned his fortunes around. He hasn't been at his best for large parts of the night, and all of a sudden he's found the key to it when it really matters. Hancock has been a little up and down by his own very high standards, but nonetheless, the two top in the world going into the final tonight will be interesting to see who comes out on top. But we've got a slightly more important thing to talk about right now. We've got semi-final number two. Semi-final two, and what a lineup this is as well. Brilliant stuff. Top, top speedway action here in Cardiff tonight. The second semi-final looks like this. Jason Doyle off the inside. Antonio Lindback goes off to Bartos Smarslik, gate three. Andreas Johnson off the outside. And, uh, well, the boys on the outside. I just have... wonder if they'll have cast an eye towards that last race and thought maybe we can do it. Well, it wouldn't have done them any harm, would it? You know, just send the two lads on the outside in semi-final number one finish first and second and go through to the final. So Jonsson, there we're looking at the yellow helmet colour and Bartosz Schmarslik alongside him in gate three. We'll be thinking, well, Wolfenden and Hancock have just done it. Why can't I? But we do have two riders in gates one and two that are quite useful. Here we go then, semi-final number two. Oh. What a start from Doyle, the red lights are on. Yeah, the red good. lights are on straight away. Maybe too good. I'd like to see that again. Yeah, I thought he was just quick away, but would need to see it again. I may be wrong. He's moving there. His, his wheel was moving. Only just. He was rolling, though, Kelf. Only just. A little bit unfortunate, that, you know. You reckon? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But he Look was. Look at him, he's moving. He's Absolutely. Moving. Yeah, 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 I agree with you, but um, I'm coming from a rider's perspective. <laughs> you know, if you What can... do you know? Well, I know that if you're rolling, you get away with it. It's quite <laughs> handy, thanks very much. Yeah, you did a few laps, I suppose, <laughs> in your a, career. Well, thank you very much, Nice. Appreciate all the support. <laughs> um, a few moments now just to gather themselves. Jesper Steentop, the referee, eagle-eyed. Pavlitsky clearly disappointed not to have made the final. He's had a great night, though. Once he reflects on how many points he scored tonight, I'm sure, though he desperately wanted to make the final, those should just console him a little bit because he has ridden very well indeed. I know it's the old saying, isn't it? That if you'd have offered him that before the meeting, he'd have um, um, snapped your hand off. Yeah, he would have cut your arm off, yeah. Yeah, very uh, much so. But uh, uh, right now it hurts because uh, he was in the box seat, um, but two riders who were more experienced than him came up with, uh, well, something a little special in semi-final number one and denied him the opportunity. Um, we're just waiting now for Andres Johnson to get pushed off and makes his way. He's going the short route to the start line. Here he comes. And uh, he'll just slip round the inside there and make his way to gate number four. Jason Doyle doing a little gardening, just looking at... I must say the tracks behaved really well tonight and uh, that's good news. To say when you bear in mind days gone by in the temporary tracks after a few years of, of having them, there were ruts, there were bumps, and the riders were, well, they were almost putting up with them just for the sake of getting Speedway into big venues. Yeah. But then they started getting a little bit fed up with it. But now there is no doubt these temporary tracks are smooth as you like. Absolutely, and uh, we've seen tonight everybody's been complimenting the track when they've been interviewed, lots of racing lines, no, uh, no excuses at all. Semi-final number two, second time of asking. Here we go then. This time, Lindback's made a good one. Doyle is there as well, charging up the inside in white. Here comes the man in white, Smarslik. And now Doyle is relegated to third with Johnson in the back. The lead, though, here is with Antonio Lindback. Doyle now is going to try the inside run on Bartos Smarslik. Gets second spot. Smarslik tries the inside run again and returns the compliment. Doyle! Doyle's charging the inside oh! run as well! How on earth did he miss him? He was like an XSM missile! Oh! Smarslik slams in the side of him! Now Johnson's in amongst it. Lindback's away out in front. He's got it. Smarslik, what a performance! Brilliant stuff from the Polish man. Doyle and AJ now out the back. Lindback, well, he's in command. And Smarslik and Doyle, what a show they put on for a couple of laps. Yeah, absolutely, and Doyle's going to miss out. They're battling for a point here at the back, but the lead is 
Division going to be with the winner, Antonio Limbach. Second place, Bartosz Marslik, who's given us another final on his uh, CV. Wonderful ride from Antonio Limbach. And what a performance. And I can tell you, Jason Doyle has gone straight back to the pits. He's clearly annoyed with himself. But Antonio Limbach has ridden brilliantly oh, tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll see how it works out for uh, third and fourth. Well, very difficult, but um, uh, we're seeing it again as they come out of the last corner on the charts of the line. Maybe Doyle, maybe Doyle's just got there in time to pick up uh, another world championship point. Difficult to tell, but what a ride it was from Limbach. He got away and he won relatively comfortably, but the battle between Smarslick and Doyle for a couple of laps there was devastating. Doyle, he, he took a chance. He dived up the inside going into turn three and I thought he was going to wipe Smarslick out. Somehow they avoided each other and young Smarslick hung on for second place. Fabulous riding in there from Antonio Limbach. Bartosz Smarslick through to the final again. Brilliant stuff from him. And Jonsson given third spot. So what a final it promises to be. Limbach, Smarslick, Wolfendil and Hancock. And that final is on the way soon. Well, we saw some fireworks uh, behind that man. Antonio Limbach was uh, superb in front and won nicely. We'll see it again. Doyle and Limbach get there side by side in the first corner with Antonio Limbach then powering down the back straight and stretches that lead in truth because then there's all sorts of shenanigans then go on between Doyle and Smarslick. Doyle then makes this move now. Crikey, I thought he was going to take Smarslick with him there. Dive bomb, Smarslick then comes back <laughs> of a good measure and really slams into the side of Doyle as they come out of turn four, second time around. Doyle very nearly coming off the motorbike. Incredible action here in semi-final number two. Really was spectacular stuff. Look at Smarslick slamming across Doyle. Doyle does well to stay on board in truth. And Andres Johnson trying to get himself amongst it as well. But Antonio Limbach, what a night he's enjoying. He's got 15 points to his name. He's having a great night. So Ty Wolfenden and uh, Antonio Limbach having a little giggle about what they're going to take here. But uh, we're ready to start the draw. So we'll get Antonio Limbach to come. Get Antonio, get An Antonio Limbach to come forward now to start the draw. So uh, Antonio's first pick. So a uh, little bit of thinking. Still thinking, looking at Ty, sorting out what they're going to have next. So Antonio's going to go gate two in blue. So gate two in blue for the Swede. Ty Wolfenden comes forward and takes gate three in white, as he would expect from the great semi-final win in the first semi-final of the night. Bartosz Smarslik comes forward and takes gate one in red. And Greg Hancock, as he did in the semi-final, no choice but to go off the outside. Gate four in yellow. So uh, we'll just confirm the lineup. We've got Bartosz Smarslik in red in gate one. Antonio Lindback in blue in gate two. Ty Wolfenden, the world champion, in white in gate three. And Greg Hancock in yellow gate four. Smarslik and Doyle had a fabulous ride there. And clearly Smarslik is looking for a little bit of extra help there. A bit of divine inspiration prior to the final. Wolfenden making his way up. Tense moments, these. Real tense moments. You've worked awfully hard. You've had six races to try and make this stage. And all of a sudden, you've now got uh, the opportunity in 60 seconds or just less to try and see if you can win the biggest speedway meeting in the world. Great, uh, great reaction from the crowd. Once again, it's a special atmosphere here in this stadium. Never fails to disappoint. And will this man, the world champion, two-time world champion in three years, and I've got to say, I want to mention Pete Adams as well. He'll be watching. Pete Adams was alongside him for those three years and made a great impact on Ty. Peter Carlson is now in his corner, but Pete Adams definitely made a big impact on Ty's career. As a consequence, won two world championships, and he's going for his third this time around. Will Wolfenden winning the Principality Stadium for the first time. Greg Hancock looking totally focused. Well and truly up for the challenge here looking quite relaxed as well he's been here before this is actually his 84th grand prix final have you ever seen greg hancock tense not really no and yeah, this is smartswick's fourth final in 10 grand prix appearances good record that and he's, and he's won one 
So uh, he knows what it takes to be a winner. And uh, Smarslik, I tell you, he will not be frightened of winning. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, Bartosz Smarslik will be very keen from the inside. I think he may be slightly surprised that he's actually got the inside gate, but a fabulous looking final. Can't wait for it. What an atmosphere here in Cardiff, and look at the World Championship standings. Two of those riders are in the final. Greg Hancock is on 66 points. Ty Woffenden in six, on 61. He's closed that gap tonight, Woffenden, to five points. And uh, after this race, we will have a break in the um, Grand Prix series as we go into the Monster Energy FIM Speedway World Cup in Denmark on the 23rd of uh, July. And then the following Tuesday, we're in Sweden. And then Friday the 29th, the race off in Manchester. Saturday the 30th, the final in Manchester, including Team Great Britain. So, here we go for the grand final, and the atmosphere is electric. Absolutely. They've got the world champion and the British fans out there. It looked uh, for a little while that he may well not quite make it this far this evening, but uh, to his eternal credit, he has dug deep and came up with a flat, a fabulous ride in the semi-final number one to seal his place in the final. It'll be very interesting to see whether taking gate three will work for him on uh, two races. And uh, he'll be hoping so. Antonio Limbach will be a big, big danger coming out of gate two. Bartosz Schnarzlik off the inside with Antonio Limbach off gate number two in blue. Ty Wuffen in gate three in white and Greg Hancock who has one here in Cardiff. He goes off the outside in yellow. Knows what it takes to win here in this magnificent stadium in the Principality. Hancock leaving his goggles off for the time being. Hope he remembers to put them on. Well, it's Wuffenden in actual fact now. He's, he's got apologize. them off. Well, it's very, very muggy in the stadium tonight. It's quite warm with the roof shut. And uh, your goggles can mist up quite quickly, so Wuffenden quite clearly going to pull them down at the very last moment. Antonio Limbach's goggles on. It's ready to go. <laughs> Schmarslick on the inside. Defences. Goggles are now in place. Good to see. Great atmosphere. What an atmosphere this is. This is this is a special race to win. This is a place every speedway rider wants to win in. Get this on your CV. You are a very proud man indeed. Here we go. 2016, the grand final. It's the grand final in Cardiff. Yes, for Street Top with his finger on the button and Limbach's made a beauty. Antonio Limbach has got that lead. Hancock has gone wide. Woffenden is in the back now. Hancock holds second spot. Third is Bartosz Schmarslik. Here comes Woffenden, who has just Whoa! gone from last to second. What a ride from Ty Woffenden in the white helmet colour. He's trying the inside run down the back straight. He's got lots of speed. Limbach now holds the lead. Woffenden, though, is going to really push hard we are after two laps now Lindback has the lead but Woffenden's not done yet Woffenden coming up the inside and so you Lindback slams the door shut they force wide what a ride it is for Woffenden Lindback away from the tapes was sensational Smarts again third with Hancock out the back Lindback down the outside it's just got a little bit of breathing space Woffenden now in the dirt square in the corner of it's Lindback Antonio Limbach is the winner in Cardiff. That is him. Antonio Limbach's third win of his Grand Prix career. But with Greg Hancock relegated to the back and Ty Wuffenden getting second spot, it does now mean that the gap in the World Championship is even closer going into the World Cup break. It's tight at the top in the title race now. Even though he's not won in Cardiff tonight, Wuffenden is a big winner here tonight in the title race. But congratulations to Antonio Lindback of Sweden. A terrific night's work. What a ride from Antonio Lindback. Gate two worked a trick for him. He took it. He took the responsibility for that decision and it paid massive dividends. He comes up with the performance of his life there. Wuffenden rode a stormer to come from last. He was nowhere away from the tape. The world champion coming through in the second place and then throwing the kitchen sink at Antonio Lindback. Greg Hancock out the back, Schmalzlick's on the rostrum. You're right, Nigel. It's a big night for Wuffenden. The world championship chase is now wide on. It's right on, but Lindback's the winner.
Limbach the winner, Woffenden second, Smarslik third and Hancock at the back. Woffenden didn't make the best of starts tonight, but he made the final and he does say that that's all he wants to do, keep making finals. He's done it here this evening, but eternal credit to this man, Antonio Limbach of Sweden. Look what it means to him, a terrific display, and nobody can deny him this because he has been super quick all night. Oh yeah, he's been on it right from the word go. He was unbeaten after three rides. Makes a great start, shows gate number two, and comes up with a devastating ride. Hancock's there, but look at this move from Wuffenden. He comes from nowhere. He comes charging around the outside in the second place. Fabulous effort there from the world champion. And here we see it. He really then puts a lot of pressure on Antonio Limbach, who rides supremely well. He resists that charge from Wuffenden. Wuffenden, just for a moment, I thought he might just get up the inside, but Limbach had the speed. He had all the answers. He hangs on on the run to the line. He sees the checkered flag. What a win it is for Antonio Limbach. He's had his problems. He's had all sorts of problems on and off the track. This is just reward for him to getting his life back in order and he's winning on the biggest stage. Wuffenden second on the night. The World Championship lead is now reduced with Hancock just in front with plenty of racing to come. What a night of speedway, thoroughly enjoyable and a fully deserving winner. Terrific night here in Cardiff, thoroughly enjoyable. And a Bartos Smarslik as well. A great night's work from the young pole too. Great credit to him, but what about Antonio Limbach? Fantastic from him. And uh, Wuffenden, who early on was really struggling, it seemed, to get through to the semi-finals. But he's got there, and now he's finished second in Cardiff, and he's closed the gap on Greg Hancock at the top of the title race. Yeah. So, uh, great night there for Wuffenden, but the night belongs to Antonio Limbach, Kel. Absolutely, it's fully deserved. There is no excuses, he didn't have any real good fortune away, he made his luck tonight. He was fast right for the world go, he won three consecutive races, he had a small dip, and then semi-final and the final, out of gate two, he wins consecutive races and wins the big prize on the night. Fabulous, fabulous performance. We'll throw down to Steve Brandon shortly to get some reaction down on the infield. In fact, let's go there now, Steve Brandon. Ty Wolfenden, uh, you said it would be. You said Ty, it would be sick to win Card if it wasn't quite a win. But what an amazing reception from the crowd during that race! Make noise! Uh, I'll apologise for that. I'll let you off for the emotion, Ty. But uh, on, a, on a serious note, from a race meeting point of view, you've closed the gap in the World Championship. You closed the gap to three points on Greg, so it was a really profitable haul. Yeah, you know, we, um, we made a good, we, we changed the last, uh, I can't even talk, we changed the bike in the last few and uh, had a lot more speed, um, struggled out starting that last one, but um, good, good uh, I think it was first corner and got it hooking up nice, so um, I was trying to chase down Antonio, but um, he's been fast all night, but um, second in front of all you guys, you're amazing. Just uh Just a World, World, Cup, Cup, World, World Cup break coming up. That final in Manchester, the team, good performance from Danny, good performance from you tonight. Mate, if we could have a crowd at Manchester like this, it'd be pretty cool. But, um, you know, Danny put on a top performance tonight, British champion this year, congratulations to him. And, you know, he rode his heart out tonight and he deserves a spot in the team. So I hope Roscoe hears that. Thanks, Ty. Well done tonight, congratulations. Antonio Limbach, a great Grand Prix victory in a great stadium. Oh my God, you know, it's, no, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, like, they're working really hard this year and they're coming to plenty of standard finals, but I have not really had that, the last bit, you know, and uh, today we was working really hard, you know, and uh, it's pay off, you know, like, I'm so happy both for me and my, my team, you know, who are doing a good, good job and working really, really hard, and uh, really now paying out and special here you know in Cardiff like this wonderful stadium and place so now I'm really happy. I, I know that you work very hard on yourself to get yourself right and mentally right for Speedway. You come to a big meeting like this and you don't get overawed. That must be really pleasing. Yeah it is you know like yeah when I was waking up to, this morning you know I was really nervous and I felt not 100% you know but uh, 
No, it was still going good, you know, and uh, oh, it's so nice now, after. All right, listen, I'll let you enjoy the podium. Well done tonight. Congratulations, sir. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Well, let's just reiterate there that uh, we apologise for any uh, offensive language that you heard there. And uh, here we see the standings now. Greg Hancock, 66, Ty Wofford and 63. That's how close the title race is now after five of the 11 rounds going into the World Cup break. It's brilliant. Jason Doyle on 54, Antonio Lindback on 53. He's rocketed up there. Uh, because uh, before tonight, I can tell you that uh, Antonio Limbach is now in fourth place in the World Championship. But uh, before tonight, he was in seventh place. So he's gone from seventh to fourth. What a night for this man, a huge night in his career, Kel. Absolutely, and uh, fully deserved. He, he didn't get it gifted to him. He uh, did it, uh, he produced when he really needed to. The semi final and the final performances were absolutely fabulous. He had more speed than everybody else he was dominating after three heats he then slipped a little but then found uh, that speed again for the semi-final and the final and as hard as Wuffenden tried in second place just couldn't find anything extra to pass him and incredible stuff from Limbach Congratulations to Antonio Limbach of Sweden, winner of the Adrian Fox FIN British Speedway Grand Prix. On a brilliant night of racing, it has to be said. He burst on the scene uh, over a decade ago, Nigel, and uh, we all thought he was a potential world champion then, and it uh, hasn't quite worked out, but um, he went out of the Grand Prix series, he's back, and he's back with a bang. He's been riding very well this year, rode brilliantly last year to actually force his way back in the series. And all of a sudden now he's reaping the rewards for all the effort and all the focus he's putting back in his speedway. Smarslick in third place tonight. He'll be pleased with that. That was a great effort. The semi-final clash he had with Doyle was a sight to behold. They really were going at it. And the Poles have had a decent night. Wofford in the second place is pleased, but I'm sure in the future he'll be desperate to be on top of the box. But uh, nonetheless, the world champion has had a fabulous night because he's only three points behind the world championship leader Greg Hancock now so all in all it's been a very good night's nice work for the world champion Antonio Limbach what a smile and fully deserved he has ridden brilliantly this evening a huge talent and at times it looked like it may be lost to the sport in truth but there's no doubt tonight Antonio Limbach now who's a little older a little wiser has uh, produced a performance that we've wanted to see for some considerable times. So congratulations to Antonio Limbach. That is uh, a fantastic night of speedway from him. Very much so. The celebrations begin here. The crowd have really enjoyed themselves, there's no doubt, and quite right too. They've had their money's worth here in Cardiff tonight. Fantastic racing. Great shot. Super. He remember this for the rest of his life, Antonio. Oh, Lindbergh. absolutely. You know, he wasn't talked about coming in tonight, was he, Nigel? And got to say that he has produced uh, a night of speedway that uh, he could have only have dreamt about. And uh, he just kept it rolling. You know, it just looked like he was losing momentum after the first three wins, and then suddenly that dynamic ride, the selfie time, brilliant stuff. And then that dynamic ride out of gate two in semi-final, wins it nicely in the final. He chose gate two, he put himself up for it, gave number one to somebody else, but he produced the start that he felt he could do, and under the greatest of pressures comes good, and that is such a satisfying, confidence-boosting ride. Brilliant. Yeah, it's all credit to them been a great night congratulations to all the riders other stories as well Danny King seven points as wildcard including a win in his 
last drive, which was brilliant. So, uh, great to see. Antonio Limba celebrating here in Cardiff tonight. Kelvin, very quickly, you're summing up thoughts. Fabulous night of Speedway. Brilliant performance from Limbach. Wolfenden, of course, will be delighted. The World Championship is right on. Great stuff once again in Cardiff. Thanks for your company. We'll see you at the World Cup, Kelv.